Hi, everybody. Hi, it's good to see you this morning. It's lovely to have you with us. Uh, have you had a good sleep? Are you nice and ready for the conundrum this morning, the a little puzzle, the little game that we're going to do? Um, I hope that your, uh, your, um, your brains are as sharp as a tack. Uh, in other words, they're very, very alert and very ready to be uh, engaging with this um, program. I just want to briefly introduce myself to those who don't know. I'm Karen and I am from South Africa. Um, it will be good for me to know which country you're from, maybe which city uh, that you're with me this morning because we're going to play a game and it would be difficult to play a game without you. So let's just see how you manage this. Um, yeah, so I am very, very keen to get started. So, um, Issa, yes, I know you. Issa, how are you? It's lovely to have you with me. I'm going to be going to um, carry on with the game. Now, yesterday I was told that we need to look at the... Um, the, the um, I talk he won as well. There were some people playing the game and I didn't even know. So I am looking at the I talk he. If you see me looking down, it's because I'm looking at the I talk he page. Now, um, is anyone else with me? Cynthia, hi. Yes, yes, we know you. Um, met you last night. It was lovely. Um, yeah, I'm I'm well. I've been <laughs> quite busy actually. <laughs> this lockdown has brought more work for me, so, which is wonderful. But I'm exhausted. So yeah. Um, now uh, I might just put this out the way. Uh, sorry, just because it just is frustrating me. Good. Uh, in the lockdown, we don't have much <laughs> opportunity for personal grooming, do we? So it just gets a bit crazy. Right, so um, well, things that are, should be on sale are not on sale, so we get a bit, uh, yeah, not so well groomed, so please excuse me. Right, um, Issa and Chinsia, I hope that you're ready to play the game. Uh, we're going to first though, go to the silent letters, so let's go to the presentation. All right, so we left off yesterday. Um, with what was the letter it must have been l that's right it was l now m we don't as we always say <clears throat> i have yet to uh, get a uh, yeah yeah um a, a, a thing where you don't say it so normally when m comes before n you say both okay when M comes before N, you say both. All right, that's a rule you, need, you can remember. However, <laughs> and of course, there are going to be some howevers, 100 howevers. When it comes at the end of a word, we don't say the N. Okay, when it comes at the end of a word, we don't say the N. So autumn, we don't say autumn. <laughs> Who knows why we have both M and N in the spelling? It would be nice if we could just spell it as the way it sounds. But autumn, autumn. So always like omnipotent or omnipresent or something like that, your M and your N are pronounced. But with, when the M and the N are at the end of a word, you don't pronounce the N. Okay, so autumn. Good. Column, repeat after me. Ka, ah, ah. Open mouth sound. Column, column, column. Good. Right. Um, oh, good day, uh, Zebra. Hi. <laughs> um, let's see. And Carolina. Hi. Carolina, what? Um, uh, and Ali and Zebra, where are you from? Um, just, just a moment. Sorry, I'm just struggling to get to this live chat. Um, 
where are you from? It's um, really good to to have you with you with us. Okay. All right. Let me let, let me know in the comments where you're from, and then we can play our little game later. All right. Dam. Now that isn't necessarily a swear word. Sometimes it is. Um, but he was damned to spend the rest of his life in um, sweeping the streets. Okay, so it was. Um, it doesn't need to be a swear word. All right. Sometimes it is when you use it as an exclamation. All right. Him. You sing hymns in church. Him. Elena from the Ukraine. Lucia. Oh, um, you from Spain. Ah, Sabina from the Ukraine. It's great to have you. Anyone else? Uh, let me know, Zebra and Carolina and JNL. Oh, Ali, uh, let me know where you're from. I can see you on the italki platform. Sabina, good. Elena, Lucia, um, Brai, Brai, is it? Or Braj? <laughs> I don't know, Brai. India, India, Braj from India. Okay. Good. Yes, yes. Lovely to have you. All right. Okay. The next one I'm going to, when you have the N before the M, if N and M come together, go to, are in a word, and the N is before the M, okay, then you never, ever, ever say the N. That's a rule. No other, there's no exception that I can think of, okay? So, when you have the M, look at my mouth, M before the N, you sometimes say both, okay? When the M and N, when the M comes first, before the N, and it's at the end of the word, you don't say the N, you just say the M. Autumn, column, damn him, okay? However, if, the, if N and M are together, in a word, and the N comes before the M, you don't say the N. That's a nice rule to remember for pronunciation. So government, if you ever hear anybody say government, let me know, I would, I would laugh. That would be very funny, okay. All right, Aurora, hi, uh, good to see you. Now the italki thing is down there. So when I look down there, I'm looking at the italki uh, platform, okay? Not the YouTube platform. Good, all right. Now, remember that today we are going to do a little game and it's called Conundrum. And I'll explain it again uh, for those of you who wish to join in. I, I said to the, those who were here at the beginning, I hope your minds as a, are as sharp as a tack in, in order to um, start the day. All right, I'll show you what a tack is. Just for those of you who don't know, let me show you. I think I can, oh, oh there you are. Do you know these little things with um, these things with a sharp pin? Oh gosh, the sharp pin on the other end. You can see that, I hope. Yep, yep, yep. You should be able to see it, okay? Um, that's a tack. <clears throat> that's why they say as sharp as a tack. I hope your minds are as sharp as a tack, okay? It's what, what, kind of, um, what kind of a part of speech is that? It's a simile, right. Liliana, hi, it's lovely to have you. Um, are you, which country are you from, Liliana? Those of you on the italki platform, can you let me know where you're from? I love knowing where people are from. It's just so uh, interesting. Okay. All right, now we come to the silent letter P. The silent letter P. Okay. So here we have a word that's from French, a coup, coup d'etat, um, but we often just shorten it to coup. Uh, there was a military coup in um, Zimbabwe, was it last year or the year before? And it's landed up being a dismal failure. There was a coup, all right? So it's a oo sound, oo, right? 
<laughs> you must look like a, a, a fish. Hmm. Right. So then, um, Grazia, hello. Zolt. Zolt, where are you from? Ah, JNL, you're from Poland. Good to know. Hello, Carol. How are you? Antonio, you're from Spain. It's welcome, welcome, welcome. It's really lovely to have you with us. Um, we're just going through the pronunciation of words with silent letters, okay? So we're going to practice them a little bit so that you can get used to them. Um, and uh, yeah, it's so nice to see so many of you up and early, up early ready for the game today. Okay. Okay, so now cupboard. Cupboard. Can you hear? There's no P. Cupboard. And notice OA becomes a, uh, <laughs> right? Because it's part of the unstressed syllable. In, um, in a word with two syllables, you will always have one stressed syllable and one unstressed syllable. <clears throat> Excuse me, that's irritating. <clears throat> so um, the unstressed syllable very, very often, but not always, becomes the uh sound. Okay, uh, cupboard cupboard. So there's no P there. Okay. Then our, our words that begin with P, N, P, S, P, T do not ever say the first P. Okay. So that is because lots of the words are from the Greek. All right. Um, so um, pneumonia, <laughs> it's, it's uh, pneumos means um, air. Or spirit in the Greek, and so um, pneumonia is related to the lungs, the air. Um, pneumonia is the illness that you get. <clears throat> For the people who were with me during the articles, English articles talk, the uh, and uh, pneumonia, you see, we don't say the pneumonia, we just say pneumonia. Okay. Pneumonia. Pneumonia. New. Mo. Remember, O is the O sound. It's like you're saying, that, like there's a W at the end of the O. Oh, o. 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 Okay. Pneumonia. Good. All right. Pseudo. Pseudo anything. Um, pseudo means false um, or pretend. Psychiatrist, I think you all may probably know what a psychiatrist is. Psychic. Psychic. And notice just, by the way, psychiatrist isn't psychiatrist. It's psi chi a trist Here your a uh is the unstressed a, uh, so it's, um, uh, it's not an a uh sound, it's a uh, trist. Okay. Psychiatrist. Good. Psychic. Psychotherapy. Okay. So you'll notice there are two stresses because a prefix plus a plus a word, they're always two stresses within the word. Okay. That's the rule. But here we just leave out the P and we go psychotherapy. Do you notice the H is also silent in that word? Okay, in, in the psycho part, <laughs> psychotherapy. Good. And the, the TH is not silent because it forms a th sound. Let's see who else. Alessandra, hi, where are you from? Uh, let me know where you're from. I'd love to know. Um, uh, those of you on the italki platform, I've unfortunately only got it on that side. I have to keep it at a lower level um, because I can't lift it up to my computer level. All right, um, psychotherapy, psychotic, it's an ah sound, open mouth sound, psychotic, so the emphasis is an ah, psychotic, right, and then in the middle of the word, we very seldom have it as a silent P, but here you go, uh, raspberry, raspberry, Okay, and then receipt. Receipt. You don't say receipt. Nobody does. Not even English people. 
<laughs> not even people who bad, speak bad English. They might not know how to spell it, but still, I will notice it's E before I, receipt. Okay, and then we do have a, a <clears throat> not exactly silent PH. We sometimes, um, but but the PH does change to a f sound. Do you remember that telephone? All right, telephone. Okay, so it's equivalent to a f sound. Okay, so it's not exactly a p sound. It's a f sound. Good. Remember the p sound has got a lot of air in it. Lots of you say the p, especially if you're from Spain or Italy, the p, and you stop the sound. You put, you actually say p, p, instead of, no, you don't even say that. You say p with a, I can't even say it, but you, you stop the air. Let the air come into your um, pronunciation. All right, let's go to the next slide. Okay. All right, I just want to go to the italki again. It's unfortunately we have such things as um, screen savers. Uh, Aurora, you're from Madrid. Um, Alessandra, you're from Apulia. Good. Uh, that's lovely. Lovely that we can hear and see so many people today. All right. Q is never silent. That's a nice rule to remember, isn't it? <laughs> Q is never silent. Nor is the F. Nor is the couple of. R is sometimes silent in British English, but not American English, okay? So um, in American English, R is never silent, but in British English, R is very often silent. Um, I can, I, actually, I'll give you a rule to help you understand when it is silent and when it's not. So start, the R actually changes the A, but you don't pronounce the R, okay? So start, R. R, start. And notice my T, I'm actually putting a lot of air into it. So I'm not exactly putting my tongue very strongly on my palate, just very softly and allowing the air to, to go through. Start. Quirk. I don't know where Murcia is, Antonio. Um, I know that in South America, you would say Murcia. But Murcia is not somewhere I'm familiar with. It's a tiny village, isn't it? Why am I wrong? Okay, then quirk. You can see here, quirk is not silent. Quirk. And then runner. All right, so if the R in British English is at the beginning of the word, you say it. If the R in the middle of the word comes before a vowel, you say it. But it, if... It comes before a consonant, you most often don't say it. And if it comes at the end of the word, you most often, in, you never say it. Okay, that's for British English though. Okay. Right. Now we are coming to the silent letter S. S. Okay, let me see. Um, Aurora is from Madrid. Ah, good. Lovely. I hope you're all doing really well this morning. Okay, so the silent letter S, aisle, aisle. <laughs> you walk down the aisle, the bride walks down the aisle of the church. To walk down the aisle is an, um, a metaphor, it's an idiom for, for getting married. If, if the bride walks down the aisle, if you walk down the aisle, you are getting married. That's what, the, the, what it means, okay? So um, you walk down the aisle of the church or the aisle of the supermarket, okay? But not, okay, so if you walk down the aisle, it, on it, just on its own, it means to get married. But if you say um, uh, the aisle, aisles of the supermarket are very narrow, that doesn't allow social distancing, um, then we will, we know what that means. But we normally cl clarify then. Um, which aisle it is. Or I went to the supermarket and the aisle was very narrow. The aisles were very narrow. Okay. Island, you know this one. And lots of you might be tempted to think of Island, but it's not. It's Island or Island, but it's Island. Uh. Remember the uh, the unstressed syllable is very often an uh sound. Okay. Right, we have a lovely French word, um, debris, debris. 
okay debris and if you don't know what that means please do look it up i want to play the game rather than spend time on on explanation of the um words okay isle again this is an island so an isle all right it's an island not not the, the isle that's at the top of the, the the list it's a different kind of isle Oh, um, yeah, I've got a misspelling here. I'm going to change it for a moment. Uh, so, and, and I'm going to do this. Um, so I'm going to do this. Sorry. Uh, here we go. I'm going to now. Um, I'm kind of coming back. I just need to go back to my um, silent letter S. Um, sorry. Here we go. There we go. Now I hope to be able to share this with you because we're going to go to the um, to the conundrum in a little while. There we go. You should be able to see it in a few seconds. Okay. There you go. Patois. That just means the language. Um, we use the, the French word there, okay? The French word, patois. Oh, uh, you haven't, you can't see the screen at the moment. It should be sharing. Let's see. I'm not sure what's happening. Uh, should be sharing. I don't know what's going on. Um, hmm. What is happening that we can't see the stream? What is happening? Okay, um, not sure. Let me just try and find out. Jeffrey, do you know what's happening with the, uh, why you can't see my screen? Um, ah, here we go, here we go, okay. Thank you, that's good. Okay, patois is the word, it's a little bit, uh, smaller obviously because I've I've um I'm sharing my whole screen instead of just the, the presentation because I'm going to write all right and then viscount viscount all right you would never say viscount <laughs> it's viscount all right let's now go to the silent letter t let's go and look at that I hope that you can see it I hope it's not too small let me know if it's too small um, right. Okay. Apostle. Apostle. The 12 apostles. Okay. Again, if you need to know an, an, um, hmm, a definition, please go and look it up in the dictionary because I want to focus on the game today. Bristle. Anything STL, you leave out the T. It's very difficult if you think of it to say Bristol. It's very, very um, awkward. And English people want to speak faster, so we don't say the T. Bristle. The brush has many bristles. Bustle. He was bustling about town. Bustle. Castle. The queen lives in a castle. Fasten. We don't say fasten, okay? Fasten. Glisten. Listen, the water was glistening in the sun. It was shining. Uh, hustle. I think you all know what that is. Hustle. Listen. Let's practice that. Listen. Moisten. Sometimes you will hear pe people say moisten, but moisten. And then we have the last one. Oh gosh, sorry. Oh, I've, st I've stopped something. I accidentally did something crazy. I accidentally stopped that from um, sh showing. Sorry, I will have to go and have a look now. <laughs> At least you can see it. I can't. So um, I accidentally touched something. I don't know what. Um, just a moment. <laughs> it's a little embarrassing. So we're going to come to our conundrum in a moment. 
Um, I think it's the next slide, if I'm not mistaken. So let me just open this again. I don't know why it closed. But of course, the computer is slow this morning. It might be because it's winter. All right. So apostle, oh, the last one is often. Okay, often, often. Okay, some people will say often, often, but they're very, very posh um, and pedantic. <laughs> so they're very posh and very precise about the way they do speak and do things in life. Okay, but most of us just say often. All right. Now I am going to close that and I'm going to go back to that. In a moment, this will open. It just takes a little time. And then we'll start our conundrum. Now, the conundrum is where normally where you get um, people who uh, show that they, they, they ask for either a consonant uh, or a vowel. And then the game show host will just pick up something from the pile and we'll put it there, either a consonant or a vowel. But I've chosen them because I want you to um, make up words using the words that we've used today. Okay, so I'm just uh, undoing my screen again for italki. So I'm now going to go here and I, I'm not sure if you can see it. I will look, I will double check. Okay, so N, okay. I want you to use silent letters. Let me see if you can see this. If you can't, I'll have to unshare and share my screen again. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to have to unshare, then share again. Okay. Um, I think that's it. All right. Okay, so we have that um, silent letter T. Now, I hope it's coming up on your side. We're now moving to the conundrum. All right. So let's hope you can. Sorry, there is something happening with my uh, computer and um, something's going wrong because now it has stopped um, sharing some, for some reason, it wants to share, hmm, something is odd on my computer. Oh, I know, it's um, on another tab. It's, uh, I don't know why it's doing this. Anyway, it, my computer is confusing me. All right, so just a moment. Sorry, it is confusing me terribly. Um, so I have to do something else. Okay, now, I haven't had the problem any other time. So let's just hope that this is right now. Yes, hooray, here is our conundrum. Now, once the game show people have received their letters, they start making words. I have specifically chosen these so that we can make words without, um, so words that we don't, where the letters we don't, the so silent letters. Okay, words that have silent letters. You can write other words, that's fine. I will write as many as possible. Then once it gets too many for the screen, I'll just uh, turn it off, okay? So I do have, um, if you're ready, you can start going. Um, I will go back to my talkie. Okay, so start making some words. Try and focus on the, the uh, letters that um, that um, with the silent letter words. So use those letters to make new words. And I will write it um, on the screen. Just make the words. So let's try, um, uh, you might try, um, let's try a silent P. Um, let's see. Hmm. No, a silent S. Yes, you have an A I S L E. You could write that down. I'm going to write that down um, here. Okay, just a moment. Okay, good. Right. 
uh, don't know what's going on there. Um, I just want to okay, let me just do something. Uh, let's just put this text box in again. There we go. That's it. Right. I need that to be white and I need it to be quite big. Right, now let's write some of the words you are getting pseudo coup, okay? Pseudo coup. Isle is the one word I put in, okay? Who else? Uh, the people on italki, let me have a look and see what you're doing. Domenica, hello. It's good to have you. Uh, we are doing a conundrum, which means that we're using the letters to make words. You can make any word you like, but we're trying to make words with silent letters in them. And I had a whole stream of them yesterday. So I hope that you will all be playing. Uh, the people, uh, Aurora, Alessandra, Soft, Janelle, Grazia. Um, yeah, let's just uh, see if we can make some words um, from what I've given you. Remember the words island. Good, Carol. Good, good, good. You're really going, going from it, going for it. Um, yeah, I'll do that, actually, in the meantime. Okay, and then I'll do a third one. Okay. All right, so let's go back to the first. Uh, let's see. Patois. Okay, pneumonia. Well done. That's a good one. Patois. Pneumonia. Well done. I'll make that slightly broader in order to fit the A in. Okay. Okay. Right next. Column. Good receipt. Excellent. You're going so fast. I can hardly keep up with you. Oh, okay. That is a very odd place to have gone. Um, Carla. <laughs> Great. Let's make this bigger and white. Column, okay. Sorry, that receipt for some reason uh, does that. Okay, good. Let's have a look and see. Um, Dam, good, excellent. You're getting this really well. Uh, good, okay. What about a silent um, T now? Silent T. I will go back through the slides quickly so that you get a bit of a uh, a bit of a cheat start, okay, to remind you of some of the words. Let me go back to this. Very quick squiz at the words, okay. There. There. There, and here we are back at our um, slide. Any more letters? Let's have a look. Debris, Carol, you're going really going for it. Your mind is as sharp as a tack this morning. Anyone else with any words? Debris. Let's try a silent T. What about a silent T? B R hmm. No, you can't do that one. Hmm. Let's look at the silent T words. Oh, sorry, this is the wrong one. We're going forward already uh, here. There you go. 
Um, I think, yeah, you can do castle. Let's see what else. Often listen, bristle, autumn. Okay, you're doing excellently. Wow. Sorry, that somehow well done. Excellent. Okay. Any more? What about the ones I can't see any from the iTalky platform who writing in words? You may not feel confident, but um do a see let's see. Often listen, often. Good, <laughs> two of you had often, uh, no, you didn't. Raspberry, ah, wow, that's good. Let's just make that bigger. Okay, let's make it 24 at least. And white, raspberry. I can see what some of you do in your spare time. I believe in Italy, it's very popular. Fasten, well done. Uh, Italy, it's very popular to do these kinds of games. Um, I don't know about Spain. Apparently on TV, um, they're shown on TV. Okay, start. Hi, um, Pardus Ahmed Choudhury from um, India. It's good to have you with us. And let me just, we are now doing a little game. Uh, whereby you make up words and we're trying to use uh, silent letters, okay? You can use other words. You can, if you feel like making up words from these letters with other, you know, that have no silent letters, that's fine, but we're trying to do silent letters here. Runner, okay, runner, good. Some of you have got good, good memories, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just going to wait a little to see if there are any more. Viscount, really good. Okay. Good, excellent. So you can't see the letters. I'm going to make them black quickly. Those two letters um, here. There you go. Okay. And then R, I'm going to make black. Here we go. Good. All right, so let's see here. Um, any more? Castle. Yes, we've got castle. Well done. Um, good. Let's see if any of you uh, do any more. I will give you a few minutes. I think it's quite fun. I know that people love playing games. Um, we have got a lot of... Um, words that have silent letters and um, so it's good to play games uh, with this yeah all right anyone else yeah start we have um we have good good we're just making up words now we're making up words I think we've exhausted what we can put down. So now I will go on to the next set of silent letters. Okay, all right. The silent letter U. All right, and I'm going to actually stop so that I can <clears throat> make the screen bigger, okay. And of course, um, I'm going to make the screen bigger and then you can actually see the it more clearly, all right. Okay, so then here I will share screen again and you will now be able to do it. Okay, good. Yeah, there you are. Okay, so you'll see the first word is a French word, baguette. Moisten, oh, I'll write that down. And basically, right, there's a silent letter for you, Tosic. Um, because the A, the second A, is silent, basically, right? Um, moisten, moisten, good, and basically, I'll go back later and put them in. Well done, everybody. We're going to play another one, so be ready for that. Okay, 
Now we've got baguette. Uh, this uh, U is often silent in English. After a Q or a G, <clears throat> it's very often silent, okay? Baguette. Biscuit. Can you hear there's no U there? Biscuit or a C. Build. Build. Repeat these words so that you practice the pronunciation. Build. Circuit. An electric circuit. Disguise. Guess. Guest. Guide. Put a lot of air into your mouth. For those of you who are new, we are just practicing pronunciation. And I'd like you to just repeat the words after me so that you can pr uh, practice those that pronunciation. Guild. There, um, she belonged to a sewing guild. And if you need to know the words of uh, the definitions, please just uh, go to the um, dictionary because I want to uh, focus on the game that we're going to play afterwards. Guilt. All right, now this one. All right. Hmm, how do we say this one? Do you think geese? Who thinks geese? Do we say geese? Do we say geese? Say yes or no for this one. Geese. No, we don't, actually. You're right. It's not geese. It's guys. Guys, guys, guys. Okay, same as G-U-Y-S, guys. He came in the guise or disguise of um, a lamb, but he was a wolf. Guitar, guitar. We don't say the U, guitar. We don't say guitar. We say guitar, guitar. And this is particularly important for the Spanish people, I think. Um, so you often say, you're right, Ferdus, it's right, correct. We often, um, we often say, um, you often say, you might say guitar uh, in, in, in equivalent, but the gi, so it's gi. Just remember that, guitar. Then rogue, rogue. Good. And silhouette. Silhouette. Right. No. <clears throat> Somehow it went funny. Okay, then I'm looking at the silent letter W. So his plans went awry, awry. Can you see that we don't say that? A bari, we don't say that, we say a rye. Often a W before an R, we don't say the W, unless it's two separate sections of a word, okay? Um, playwright, playwright. Unless the one ends in W, one section of a word ends in W and the next ends in R, but I can't actually think of an example. Sword, sword. We don't say sword. People don't know what a sword is. A sword is that big, long metal thing that pe that the knights in armor used to fight with. Rack. Rack. That noise is just racking my nerves. Or they used to use torture racks. Okay. Wrangle. 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 Okay. For those who are saying, please, could you make it available offline? It is available on the, I on this, actually on the YouTube website, on this website, on the YouTube website. Once um, at midday, all you need to do is rewind that little at the bottom of the YouTube thing, there's a rewind. You can rewind the tape kind of thing to the beginning, and then you will be able to see it for this. Okay. <laughs> Rap. Rapper. Roth. Reek. Roth is great anger. Okay. Reek. Reek havoc. 
the tornado wreaked havoc. That's a collocation, by the way. Wreath, the little wreath that you put on the Christmas wreath that you put on your door. Or a wreath for a funeral. Wreck. I'm an absolute wreck after all oh, the, sh the ship was shipwrecked. But I'm an absolute wreck after a long week of hard work. Wrestle. Wrestle. Wriggle. Ring. Wrinkle. Wrist. Writ. What is a writ? Not right. Writ. It's a legal term. He gave her a writ of something. It's a. It's not just a document. It's a statement of something. A writ. Uh, an order. A command. A writ of something. Well, not so much order or command. It's more like. Um, yeah, uh, uh, a for, I don't know how to explain it, actually. A writ is a legal document, at least, a legal statement. Right? Wrong. Now, obviously, you know the difference between R-I-G-H-T, which is correct, um, and R-I-T-E, which is right, and then wrote. Okay, now we can actually come to our conundrum. Good. So those of you who want to join in, I see that no one from the italki platform is joining in. But um, those of you who can, take these letters and make some words with them. And I'll start with one, okay, just to make it easier. Um, I just want to see if I could, mm, no, I can't make the word baguette from there. Uh, so... Mm, yeah, I can make the word biscuit. I'm going to do that. Just a moment. Those of you who want to join in and make some words, do do that. It's quite fun. Um, try and make some words, especially with silent letters. Are we focusing on silent letters? So let's do that. Okay, let me do. Okay. There you go. Biscuit. I did the first one. Rack and reek. This guys, I'll come back to that, Carol. Um, well done, this guys. Your um, you. Okay. Okay. Rack is um, rack is a torture rack. That's the the the, um, the or a dish rack. Okay, so when you wash up in the sink, there's a, a rack next to the sink where all your dishes go. Just let's use that rather than torture rack, which is old fashioned. Um, and uh, reek is a verb. Okay, um, yeah, a reek havoc. Okay. Uh, build and guide. Build. That's not a silent letter. You know that. Uh, but guide is a silent U. Um, I'm saying to everybody, you can make other words just for fun. Um, but you don't have to. I see the uh, people on the italki flat platform are very shy. Uh, you don't have to be. It doesn't matter. Rest. Good. That's even one that wasn't in the list, but wrist, yes, excellent. This is really good, you're doing very well. Writ right, good, well done. And that's how people who do conundrums do the, do it because they actually, um, yeah, they, they, um, they focus on the, a few letters and see how many they can get out of it first before they go on to the next uh, words. Rack and wreck. 
Carol, uh, rack, the rack, dish rack that you find in your sink. And rick, eh, eh, rick. Okay, rick. Um, we're going to continue with a, a, with these words. You can you can even bring in previous words from the past with silent letters. Okay, so let's just see. It doesn't just have to be a W, uh, S, T, or U. Um, let's you can bring in any word from the past. A sword. That's it. A sword. And hopefully you will all know what a sword is because it's used metaphorically. Uh, these days, we hardly have literal swords anymore, but we do have metaphorical uses. Okay, let's see who else has. Let me see if I can do any. Let me see. Um, uh, okay, I can do guest, actually. And guess. So let me do that. And there you are. Guess and guest. Wrap. Yeah, well done. You were doing it at the same time as I did. Yeah, wrap. Well done. Okay. Yeah. I can't see any more uh, italki platform people. I think you're just too shy. Two. Okay. Fine. Remember that we're making any words, um, but we're trying to focus on the ones with. Um, <clears throat> actually, two does have no uh, W, and you picked that up very good um, because two does not, isn't, you don't pronounce the W. Fantastic. Absolutely excellent. I didn't mention that one. Guild. Guild. Guile. Mm -hmm. Guile. Guile. Rogue. I missed that one. Rogue. Once again, you have a silent U. Let's go back. Let me quickly um, go back to maybe some silent T's. You might be able to have a look at these quickly. I'm just giving you some reminders, okay? I'm going to quickly go through the slides. You can have a look at them and see if you could maybe make the words. I doubt that you would be able to make any of the A words. The B words, you might be able to make some of those. Okay. The C words. The D is silent D. And then we had our conundrum, so I won't do that. The silent E, of course, that's fairly easy. F, you always say the, uh, so the silent G. The silent H. The silent I, K, L, good, N, P, you know your R's, they're very few, uh, we mentioned a very few example, S and T, U, W, you always say a V. 
And here we are, we're back to the conundrum. Okay, so let me have a look and see if any of you have guilt guitar guide, good. Okay, let's write them here. Well done, everybody, you really are on the ball. Okay, uh, guilt, guitar, guide, um, yeah, guide. Good. Who else is, uh, let's see, age, yeah, age. Good. We've just got a few more minutes. Of course, um, we'll do the silent E, hide. I can do a silent H, ghost, ghost. Let me see if I can, no, I can't. Um... No, you. Oh. Yes, there is. Let's see. Choir, what? Good. Well done. Okay, I'm going to extend this up here. I'll extend this up here. So it can fit in the last two words. Okay, we've got very few. Um, very little time left, um, but that was really great. It was fun. It was lovely having you, and I hope that you enjoy it thoroughly and um, and that we'll see you next week. Uh, next week, I'll probably be doing some business English um, cross-cultural engagement, and I'll go into that in quite a lot of depth. So lovely to have uh, been with you today. Lovely to have uh, had your input. And um, if you want to book a lesson court, fantastic, excellent, Elena. If you want to book a lesson with me, teacher Karen, please click the link or check the link italki.com slash teacher forward slash 566908. And don't forget, uh, you can go back, you can rewind this to, uh, you can rewind any of the lessons to carry on going. Um, so we'll just, um, yeah, I look forward to seeing you there. And um, I really hope that you enjoy our free lessons for this week. Remember that you can have a $10 a discount for your first lesson uh, if you just go to italki.com and find out what that ex what that means exactly um uh, carol i'm glad you really enjoyed that that's fantastic fantastic and goodbye everybody take care all right let me just remove that
dispuestas a ayudarte a practicar el idioma que desees aprender. Los usuarios con tiempo libre se mostrarán disponibles para recibir llamadas y de esta forma ganarán recompensas ayudando a otros usuarios. Así es como conectamos personas de forma colaborativa y gratuita en nuestra aplicación. Únete a nuestra comunidad, haz nuevos amigos y mejora en todos los idiomas que quieras. Descarga Lingvi y practiquemos juntos. Este es Peter. Está aprendiendo chino. Ha intentado estudiar por su cuenta con libros, tarjetas de vocabulario y aplicaciones móviles, pero sigue teniendo problemas para hablar. Esta es María. Le encanta aprender inglés, pero no tiene oportunidades para ponerlo en práctica. Con Italki, Peter y María pueden recibir clases personales online para hablar con fluidez en otro idioma. Tú también puedes aprender un idioma en Italki. Empieza hoy en tres simples pasos. Primero, elige un idioma. Inglés, alemán, chino, francés, japonés... Italki tiene profesores para cualquier idioma. Segundo, escoge un profesor. Con Italki puedes escoger entre miles de profesores con experiencia de todo el mundo. Tercero, elige el horario de tu lección. Las clases de idiomas online son el mejor método para aprender con profesores nativos. Con Italki tendrás un profesor de idiomas personal y conversaciones reales con hablantes nativos. Cada día miles de personas aprenden con profesores internacionales a través de Italki. Encuentra un profesor hoy y domina el idioma de tu lección. Hi everyone, it's Vicente and I teach Spanish on italki.com and today we will be talking about three grammar rules to follow when you start learning Spanish. The first one is that as you have already heard, Spanish verbs are always conjugated. That means that they have to match with the subject of the sentence. For example, there are different pronouns in Spanish. Yo, tú, él, ella, usted, nosotros, nosotras, vosotros, vosotras, and ellos, ellas, y usted. All these pronouns have their own conjugations, and it's very common for beginners to mix them up. So remember this. When you start to conjugate the verbs, they have to match. The second rule is very important as well. The Spanish nouns and adjectives have to be in the same level. Let me explain you this. If you have a noun that is feminine and plural, for example, las mujeres, the adjective that you have to use right after the noun has to be feminine and plural as well. For example, las mujeres españolas. It is the same with the articles las, female and plural. We use this article because, as I say, it's female and plural. The third rule I already mentioned before and be careful, English speakers, because the adjectives in Spanish go after the noun, not before like in English. This is very common for uh, students that learn Spanish and already speak or know English. When I say it, las mujeres españolas, españolas is the adjective, and I put it after las mujeres. In English, it would be a Spanish woman, but not in Spanish. Okay. There are some occasions where the adjectives go before the nouns. That is true, but normally this use comes out at intermediate level or advanced level. So do not worry when you are a beginner. Thanks for watching this video. And don't forget to subscribe to the italki YouTube channel over here. Take a lesson with me on italki.com by clicking on my teacher profile link in the description. Hasta luego. Hi everyone, it's Vicente and I teach Spanish on italki.com and today I will be talking about seven Spanish words that are similar to their English counterpart. These words are also known as cognates. What a cognate is? A cognate is a word that has the same linguistic derivation that another word and it looks similar and when you pronounce it, it sounds almost the same. And here, I will give you seven cognates so you can use them in Spanish as well. The first one is alcohol in Spanish. Guess you know what it means because it sounds pretty similar than in English, doesn't it? Number two is conclusion. 
This one has a different pronunciation in Spanish, but you will understand definitely when you start learning Spanish. Number three, three, <laughs> hobby. This one is completely similar. We basically took this word from English. Number four, individual. Of course, it's the same word, just different pronunciation. The next one, number five, is piercing. Yes, we use this word with the same pronunciation and meaning. Next one, number six, is informal. I like to use this one in my lessons to explain ways to greet and say goodbye because it's similar in English and is a word that the students understand very quickly. And the last are some words related to sports. If you are learning Spanish and you like sports, you're lucky because most of the words are cognates like football, tennis, baseball, volleyball, hockey, water polo, golf, surf, and so on. As you can see, almost all sports are cognates. So, talking about your hobbies should not be difficult. As you can see, there are many, and I would like to remember you that there are hundreds of cognates, and if you check them, you can be ready to your first Spanish lesson. Thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the iTalki YouTube channel for more tips on learning Spanish. Take a lesson with me on italki.com by clicking on my teacher profile link in the description. Hasta luego. Hi everyone, it's Caroline here and I teach English on italki. Today I am going to be talking about business idioms or idioms you might hear in your office or in your workplace. A student asked me a really good question the other day. He asked me whether, because I'm an, a native English speaker, do I know every single idiom? And the answer is no. Idioms are phrases or expressions that come from a particular place or a particular age group. So idioms are different in the UK to idioms in the United States. I have chosen five business idioms to talk to you about today, and you may hear them in an office in the UK or in the States. So hopefully they will be super useful for you. Idiom number one is the big picture. Imagine you go into a meeting and your boss says to you, you've lost sight of the big picture. What does that mean? That means that you are thinking too much about the small details of the project and you are so interested in those little details that you don't remember what it is you're trying to achieve. So always keep sight of the big picture. The second idiom is to go the extra mile. Now imagine you're in an interview and the interviewer says to you that they are looking for someone who always goes the extra mile. What does that mean? Does it mean they want you to run around the office every day? No, it means they want you to do more than just what is in the job description. They want you to go that little bit further and to take on extra responsibilities that is going the extra mile. The third idiom is a win-win situation. A win-win situation means everybody gains something. A really good example of this is these videos that I'm making for italki. Italki gains some content for their website, some lessons for their learners, and I have a platform where students can see me and book lessons with me. It's a win-win. Italki wins? And Caroline wins. The fourth idiom is word of mouth. So an example of this is think about how you found out about italki. Did you find italki by searching on Google or did you find italki because one of your friends recommended it to you? Recommendations from friends are word of mouth. It can be positive or it can be negative. If your company gets bad word of mouth, it is going to be a very difficult time for your company because people really listen to the opinions of their friends. So make sure whatever you do, you have good word of mouth about it. The fifth 
And final business idiom is to touch base. My manager used to say this to me a lot. To touch base means to have a very quick and short meeting about a project or something that you are working on. It might only be five minutes of your time, but in that time, you will check that your understanding of the project is the same as your manager's understanding of the project. So I have a challenge for you. In your next lesson, I want you to ask your teacher if you can touch base about what you have learned in your lessons so far. This could be five minutes at the end of the lesson where you review all of the different subjects that you have been studying. You're touching base about the things you have covered so far. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't I took it by clicking. To native English speakers, it's useful to use a variety of vocabulary to make your conversation sound more interesting and flow. Why not spice up your language a little bit and impress others with your speaking abilities? In this next video, we will take a look at some American and British slang. Number one, American. John Hancock. John Hancock. Mm -hmm. So that's a person. It's a name of a person, yes. And it's American slang. Mm -hmm. What do you think of me? Um, I just got John Hancock. Does it mean that wasted? Certainly not. G give me an example. Okay. So, can I please have John Hancock at the bottom of this paper? Come on, you gotta get it now. Is it your signature? Yes! You got it! That was easy! Okay, awesome. Number one, British. Peak. What does peak mean? Like, uh... Yeah, that's, that's Sorry, that's not taking a peak. That's not slang. This is taking a peak. Well, that's just like taking a peak, that's not slang. Oh. Like in a that's slang like peak. Like the peak of a mountain? That's not slang. That's actually yeah, a Yeah, that is the peak of a mountain. I don't know. Tell me. Okay, let me give you an example. So, say you go out, you go out one night, and you lose your purse, your keys. Is it like phone. the most horrible situation you can be in? Yeah, exactly. You'd be like, that's so peak. But also, yeah. How was your night? It was so beautiful. Hello, everybody. It's Sarah Rose here. Welcome back. Welcome to today's English class. How are you? Who is here? I've got my comments open on my other screen. So you can write a message um, and say hello and who you are. Have we got any students who have been to previous classes? Or is this your first English class today? Um, this was going to be my last class, but we are doing live stream again next week. So we extended the live stream or italki extended the live stream. So there's another week, hopefully, of classes. Um, but happy Friday. And where are you joining me from today? Um, what we're going to do today this class is about job interviews, more or less. We're going to talk about job interviews. My previous classes for job interviews were for an advanced level, for advanced students. This class, this class is for an intermediate or upper intermediate level. 
if you are advanced, I think you will also learn something. But hopefully, if you are at an intermediate level, you will also be able to participate in this class. It's a bit less advanced. Um, and we're going to talk about some advice for job interviews, talk a little bit about them. We're also going to do a listening game. Um, and then we're going to talk a bit about describing our skills. OK, so let me I need my notebook for the game we're going to play. Uh, so I've got that. And let me open the presentation that we're going to use today. Uh, one moment, please. Share my screen. Great. Cool. That should be up then. OK, so do say hello. As I said, today we're going to be preparing for job interviews. Um, my name is Sarah Rose. I'm from Wolverhampton. Uh, in the UK. That's in England. Do you know it? Some people know it because of the football team. This is the football stadium. I actually live or my home is very near this football stadium. It's orange. It's very famous because it is so orange. Well, gold, but it's orange. Um, and I live near there and we, our football team is Wolverhampton Wanderers or Wolves Los Lobos. Um, but I don't live in Wolverhampton. I live in Alicante in Spain and it is a beautiful sunny day in Spain today. Um, so where are you from or where are you at the moment? Let me know. Let's see. We have some people. Oh, great. Uh, we have Isa from Saragossa. Hello, Isa. Nice to meet you. Carol White from Italy. Hi. Where in Italy? if you want to say, uh, from the north, from the south. Um, Angel from Barcelona. Hi, Angel. Cool. What a cool city. Let's see. And then on italki, we have Richard from Switzerland. Oh, hi, Richard, again. Um, Anna, again. Hi, Anna. OK, Anna, you might know some of the answers in this in this class, so I hope that you remember them. Um, Sergio from Spain. Hi. Uh, Gurgli from Hungary. Cool. I think you're my first student from Hungary. Marina from, oh, we have so many people today. <gasps> Sergio, you're from Ronda. Oh, wow. Ronda is in the south of Spain in Andalusia. We have a phrase that some people say in English. The phrase is a heart place. Heart is in here, the place where you love or where you feel emotions. And a heart place is somewhere that you love, that is so special to you, a very, very special place um, because it makes your heart feel warm. And Seville in Andalusia is a heart place for me. I love, 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 love Seville. It's so beautiful. Um, and so when I was in Seville, you can go to Ronda and Ronda is also very beautiful. Um, so interesting if, if any of you, do any of you have a heart place? Maybe it's not where you are from, but it's a very special place. Maybe somewhere you used to live, somewhere you love, somewhere um, you want to live, or maybe you went on holiday there once and after lockdown, you want to go back for holidays. Maybe your heart place is in England or the UK. <laughs> Perhaps um, another one of my heart's places isn't in England, but it is in the UK. It's Edinburgh in Scotland, the capital city of Scotland. And that is also a very beautiful city. So that's another one of my heart places. So do you have a heart place like me, a special place? Not where you are from, but tell me if you have a special place that you love to go to. Um, Hello, somebody else, Carme from Barcelona, Maurizio from Italy, Carolina from Spain. Hello. Hi, Martina. Oh, we have lots of comments. Um, Elena from Kiev. Cool. Uh, Robert, hi from Valencia, Rakena. Um, ah, it's not hot. So not a hot place like hot, but 
heart, and this is good because we're going to look at vowels, as in the heart that you have here, I'll actually type it, um, that Danielle says, two of the most beautiful heart places I have ever been to are Sicily and Mexico. Yes, Mexico is definitely a heart place. And Carol says, Bath is a heart place. Oh, I think Bath is like, or Bath, if you are from Bath, you say Bath, but I'm not, so I say Bath. Um, Bath is a beautiful city in England. It's so uh, old, it's so historic that it's like another country. When you go to Bath, it is like you have left normal England and gone on holiday to a new, a new world. Yes, Bath is a beautiful place. Uh, Elena says, my heart place is in Crimea. It used to be the south of Ukraine in Crimea. Wonderful. I've never been, but it's, uh, I would love to go if it is your heart place. <gasps> Ita says, my heart place is Tokyo. Oh, how cool. I've never been to Tokyo, but once I went to Kyoto and I have to say it was a heart place. It's so beautiful. Ankel, my heart place is Menorca. I love free diving and that island is amazing to practice it. Cool. Okay, so what is free diving? Excellent. Ankel, by the way, excellent sentence. Very good English. Um, uh, free diving is when you swim underwater with no apparatus. So it's not snorkeling and it's not scuba diving because in snorkeling, and scuba diving, you have a mouthpiece. In free diving, you just <gasps> hold your breath and swim. That's very difficult. It's quite dangerous too, but uh, it's meant to be a very wonderful place. Martina says, my heart's place is LA. Ooh, very exotic. Uh, very nice. Somebody says, Greece. Cool. Ah, hi, Andreas from China and living in Germany. Wow. Um, Berta, I'm from Alicante. Hello, I'm in Alicante now. Isn't it a beautiful day? And then I'll just look at one last one, Anna. My heart place is Asturias as I come from there and it's so beautiful. Not the weather, but the views. <laughs> also, I love Lisbon. It's another heart place for me. Yeah, Lisbon is a very beautiful, I, I, can, I understand why you might love it. Oh, so many different places. And um, Virginia has politely asked, can you pronounce the difference between heart and heart? Yes, I can. And actually, we are going to look at that in today's lesson. But the, the difference is when we are hot, we have the o oh sound. Hot. This is temperature. Whew. It's so hot, hot, hot. And then when we talk about our heart, it's an ah sound, heart. We pronounce it the same as art. So when we talk about an art gallery, heart, art, and we pronounce it the same as part. So the part of a computer or the part of a building, part, el parte, uh, and that is the same as heart. Of course, heart is spelt differently. It's spelt with an E, H-E-A-R-T. But we, we don't say the E, we don't say he art, we just say heart, like art. I hope that helps. And somebody asks, what's the difference between heart and earth? <laughs> well, they are quite different, I think. So heart, we have the R sound. So we have O in hot, R in heart, hot, heart. And then in earth, we're coming with an uh sound, earth. It's like uh, earth. And there's not many right words that rhyme with earth. Maybe the Australian city, Perth, or uh, that's really kind of the most common one, earth. So it's the difference between ah uh, and it's like an A sound, ah uh, and uh, earth. Ah, I hope that helps. Uh, I'm always confused. I know these are difficult. I'm so happy that we have some questions about vowels because that is what we are going to start with. So today, um, do keep saying hello and tell me where your heart places are. It's such a lovely thing to know. 
Um, today we're going to do a listening game. Then we're going to do some interview advice. And then we're going to talk about skills for job interviews. Because the topic today is job interviews. I did this game in a previous lesson. So you might have done it before. Anna might have done it before. Um, but we're doing different words this time. So it's good to practice with different words. And you might want to have uh, a pen and paper, or you can write in the comments or write on your computer or phone. So if you want to play the game, you should write your answer in the comments or write it on pen and paper. Um, and it's important because this game is going to help us practice understanding English. Now, when you go to a job interview, you need to understand the question as well as answer it. We need to understand and answer the question. And that's what we're going to practice. For those of you who are new, if you don't understand something, if you have a question, if you want me to talk more slowly, please write in the comments. Um, and I will try to read them, but I think we have quite a lot of people today, but I will try to read all the comments. Um, yes, and you can comment on the italki page or on YouTube. I have both pages open. Okay, so how does this game work? I'm going to tell you a phone number. So like you would hear a normal phone number. But instead of telling you the numbers, I'm going to say a word. And you have to find the word that matches the number. Okay, how does that work? Well, for example, if I say, and this is what we have at the bottom here, pit, put, put, that would be one, four, three. Pit, one, put, four, put, three. Okay. So I say the word and you write down the number. And the game is, can you hear the correct number? Can you hear which word I am saying? All these words start with p and end with t, with a t sound. But the vowel sounds are different. So the vowel sounds or los vocales, I think in Spanish, is when is these uayau sounds. Yeah, the the sounds that join consonants, they go between consonants. So the vowels are in the middle of the word. And some of these vowels are often quite difficult. So I'm going to first of all go through eat the whole, all the words so you can hear me pronounce them. I am English. I'm from Wolverhampton, but I have quite a generic English accent, I think. So you will need to listen to the English pronunciation. If you are used to American English, maybe my pronunciation is a little bit different. Yeah, my accent is different. So listen carefully. These are, these are words are quite random words because I picked words that begin with P and end with T. So the vocabulary isn't necessarily useful, but I've put the meaning in Spanish for the Spanish speakers. And hopefully if you speak Italian, it might help as well. Um, but let's go through them now. OK, um, Daniel says, where is zero? Good question. I don't have a zero because I could not think of another word that began with P and ended with T. I'm sure there is one, but I couldn't think of one. So <laughs> we only have nine. Um, okay. So first of all, number one is pit. Pit. That is a short I sound. And that is an oil. Uh, a pit is a hole in the ground or maybe a hole where people find coal, a coal pit. pit. Number two is pat. Uh, a pat is like a gentle touch, a pat, 
or um, you might pat a dog, pat. Number three is putt. This is a word we only use for golf. Do you play golf? Maybe you know this word, putt. But it is the uh sound we have here, similar to the word cut. This is difficult with four, which is put, to put something down. So three is put, four is put. Five is port. So do you live in a port city? Does your city have a port where the boats arrive? Like a marina, a port is, a, uh, is on the sea where boats come and go, a station for boats, port. Six is a name, Pete. Seven, part, the part of something, the part of a cake or part of a car. Eight is pet, uh, an animal you have at home. And nine is pot, pot, okay. And a pot is like a box. You put things in a pot. You can have a pot for water, a flower pot, a pot for, um, I don't know, a pot of makeup, maybe. You put your makeup in a pot, uh, a pot. Okay. Some of these are more difficult than others. Very often, one and six are difficult. Pit and peat. Pit and peat is often difficult. We might also find we earlier we said hot and heart. So here we have pot and part and pat. Pat, short, part, long, pot, which is an o sound. And also I think maybe put and put, okay. Is it totally confusing yet? <laughs> Do you understand anything? Maurizio says, is the R in port silent here? It's not, well, yeah, it's silent. We don't say port, for example. We don't say it, but the R changes the vowel. So the reason we have R here is because it makes the vowel longer. So pot, short, or oh, pot. And here with the R, port. Pot, port. Um, of course, port is also a type of wine from Porto. We have port. And the same with pat and part. Pat is short, but with the R, part. Pat and part. Hope that helps. Um, okay. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to tell you the number. Each phone number will have six numbers, six words. I will tell it to you. Make your guess, and then we will see if you've got it right. So, number one. I think I'll do three. No, we'll do one to begin with. So, put your guesses in. Number one. Okay. This is put, put, peat, pet, Pot, pot, okay? All right, let me tell you that again. That was put, put, peat, pet, pot, pot, okay? Do you want to write your guesses in um, and see what you've got? I'm going to read it one more time. Okay, the first one is put, put, peat, pet, part, pot. Okay. Right, great. Okay, we have some guesses coming in here on italki. Is anyone on YouTube 
gonna uh, any guesses on YouTube? I haven't seen any yet. So let's look on italki. Ooh, some good guesses. Four three four three four two four two four three. Good, good. Okay. Eight seven nine at the end. We've got some good ones. Okay, let's have a look. Oh, I'm on the wrong computer. Oh, here's a couple on YouTube. Great. Good. Okay. Good guesses. Thank you for guessing. Okay, let me tell you the answers. It was put four, put three, peat six, pet, part, pot. So it was four, three, six, eight, seven, nine. I wonder if you can see that if I put it up. Does that help? Four, three, six, eight, seven, nine. Okay. So a lot of people got uh, four, three. Quite a lot of people got eight, seven, nine. Quite good. But what did we get confused with? We got confused between six and one. So let's revise that. Six is Pete. Look at my mouth. Smile, Pete. The long E sound. E. But pit, I don't smile. Pit is I, number one. Pit. I, E. I, E. Pit, Pete. Uh, if you can hear the difference, try to say it if you can at home or wherever you are. Try to say number one, pit. Number six, Pete. E. Okay. Yeah, people got confused one and six and three and nine. Three and nine. So three is the uh sound, put. And nine is pot. Oh, uh, oh, put, pot. Quite hard. Shall we do another one? Okay, let's do another one. We have number two. Uh, let's go with... And this is the phone number for the pizza restaurant. Okay, so we want to buy some pizza. What is the phone number? It is pet, pat, part, um, port, pot, put. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me say that again. All right. Listen again. Are you ready? Pet. Pat. Part. Port. Pot. Put. Okay. And one more time. Pet, pat, part, port, pot, put. I'm going to write it very, yeah, very clearly on here so you can see it afterwards. Um, the last three, just to say those again, was port, pot put. Okay. Ooh, quite hard. We have quite a lot of differences in some of the answers, but a lot. So on I talk, we have a lot starting eight to seven. Yes. Good. And good. Five, nine, four. Okay. Very, we've got some good ones. So the answers was, the answer was pet, eight, pet, two, Part, so you can hear the pat part, port, pot, put. Okay, so it's eight, two, seven, five, nine, four. Can you see that? Eight, two, ignore the two, which is the number. <laughs> the number, which one are we doing? Eight, two, seven, five, nine, four. How did you do? Ah, uh, good, 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 good. Eight, two, seven. We've got some people there confused between two and three. So two and three are 
pat and put. Again, that's the simple a uh sound with the uh, which we use for you. So pat and put. And somebody said they confused nine and seven. Part and pot. Two and eight, pat and pet. So some of these vowels are very short, which can help you differentiate. Pat, uh, pit, pat, put, put, pet, pot. One, two, three, four, eight and nine are short vowels. And then five, six and seven are port, peat, part. They're a little bit longer and maybe that helps. Okay, some people are very confused. Okay, let's do one more. We'll do one short one to end. So number three, the final one. So we've got, remember two and three is pat and put and seven and nine is part and pot. Part and pot, okay. Last one, let's go. Um, Pete. Pat, pot, port, put. Okay, that was. I can't <laughs> I keep writing them wrong. All right, Pete, pit, pat. Pot, put, put. And finally, pit, pit, pat, pot, put, put. And just to say those last three again, that was pot, put, pat. Oh, sorry, oh my gosh, I said it wrong. Sorry, again, sorry, ignore that one. The last three are pot, put, put. The last one is put, a uh, put. Okay, any more? Anybody coming to guess again? Not to, it's good to keep practicing. What is interesting as well is that your native language will change which sounds are difficult. So perhaps in your native language, there is no difference between pit and peat. It's the same. Seems crazy to think that that is possible. But in English, we have a lot more vowels than other languages. And that is why it can be very difficult. But for an English speaker, these vowels are so different that we cannot believe they sound the same. You know, Pitt and Pete, they sound so different to me. Um, but if those, that difference doesn't exist in your mother tongue, it can be very difficult. All right, let's go through the answers. So that was Pete, six. Pit, one, pat, two, pot, put, put, nine, three, four. So six, one, two, nine, sorry, nine, four, three, nine, four, three. I'm confusing myself. I'm not surprised you're confused. Six, one, two, nine, five, two, six, eight, two, nine, five, three. A lot of people are getting most of them. Some, who have we got? Who's, has anybody got them all right? <gasps> Hi from Belgium. From Belgium. I think you've got them all correct. Well done. Oh, sorry. 943. Who else has got it all correct? Six, one. Elisa, I think you got it all correct. And Daniel, you got it all correct. Well done. Good. A couple of people got them all correct. I'm really impressed. 612943. Isa, well done, Isa. Excellent. Very good. Okay. And a lot of people got most of them right. So I suggest look at those ones that you don't, that you got wrong. Okay. Which are the, the sounds that you got wrong? And you can look 
write those words down. So for example, if you got seven and two wrong, seven part and two pat, okay? If you got those two wrong, you got confused. After class, search those words in a, a real dictionary, a dictionary that has the phonetic alphabet, okay? So when you search the word, it will tell you the phonetic alphabet, how to pronounce the word. And then you will see what are the sounds that you are finding difficult when you see it written in the phonetic alphabet. The phonetic alphabet is difficult to read, but you only need to look at the bits that you find difficult. Because then you can watch a video um, and, and look up those words and how they're pronounced. And a website I think is really good for this. And I'll show you, I'll just type it up for you so you can see it. Um, oh, if I can, yeah, is www.youglish.com. This is a really good website where you can see how words are pronounced because basically they have every word and they connect the word to YouTube. So on Youglish, you can write in Pete and it will find lots of videos of people saying Pete, you can listen. And when you can hear the difference, then you can practice saying the difference. Um, Alex says, oh, Alex is asking a difficult question. Okay, how do three and four different differ when pronounced by someone from Northern England? Three and four, <laughs> put and put. I don't know. I can't put. No. I can't do. I can't do a Northern accent, unfortunately, Alex. <laughs> um, so I am notoriously bad at accents. I don't know what the put how put would be different in the in the northern English accent, but it would certainly the vowel. So one problem with English, not problem, but one feature of the language, it's the vowel sounds that change a lot when you move around different countries or parts of the country. So the vowels, uh, somebody asked, is the R in port silent? Yes, it is, but in Northern Ireland, they might pronounce the port, the R, and in Scotland, they would as well. They might say port, they might say the R. Um, so it does change, the vowel sounds change. Okay, um, right, let's go on to our next part of the class. Thank you for participating. I'd really like you to participate in this part as well. So we're gonna talk about giving advice. Now, of course, in my classes, I, I often give people advice, but I want to see if you, have advice to give each other or to give different people. So for example, um, we're going to talk about giving advice about job interviews. That is the topic of today's class. Um, so have you guys been on a lot of job interviews? Have any of you ever been the interviewer? Have you interviewed other people? Do you know what makes a good interview or a bad interview, I want you to share your advice. First, I want to check how do we give advice. So here are three sentences we use when giving advice. One, you should or shouldn't. Two, if I were you, I would. And three, you should try. Which one of those, first of all, is a can second conditional sentence. Here we have a proper complete conditional sentence. If I were you or if I was you, which is what we often say, though technically some people think it's incorrect, but we can say if I were you or if I was you, I would. That's what I would do. Or we can just say you should or you shouldn't. These are stronger, you should, and you should try is also quite strong. But we could change should to could to make it softer. You could or you could try. Do you know um, which, whether we use the infinitive or the ing form of the verb after these sentences? Okay, so do we say, you should be on time 
Or do we say you should being on time? Which one is correct? You should be on time or you should being on time. Remember, the infinitive is the dictionary form. It's the form of the verb with nothing, no change. We haven't changed it in the infinitive. People are putting in Berta. Great. Should be. Correct. Okay. Excellent. What about number two? If I were you, I would being on time. Or if I were you, I would be on time. Which one is correct? And um, what about number three? You should try be on time or you should try being on time. Let's have a look. I would be, yeah, correct. Yes, excellent. So we've got two is I would it be on time with the infinitive and you should try, you should try being. Excellent. Okay, very good answers. You could say you should try to be on time if you wanted to be on time or being. So you could say to be, but you can't say you should try be on time. That's not right. OK, good. Well done, everybody. So let's have a look at those examples. I think everyone got that. You should always be on time. If I were you, I would be on time. You should try being on time. OK, so now we know how to give advice. And I think everybody did really well there. I want us to look. I want to use our imagination to think of some advice for some people in certain scenarios. OK, so here we have a scenario and I want you to write what advice would you give this person? So this person has come for a job interview and the interviewer. This is the interviewer and this is the interviewee. So we want advice for the interviewee. Um, the interviewer says, was the interview too early for you? Why has he said that? Why has he said, is it too early? Because the interviewee is wearing, what is he wearing? And what is he carrying? He's wearing his pajamas. So the interviewer says, is the interview too early because you're wearing your pajamas? You look like you have come from bed. You're carrying your teddy bear. Uh, this is a teddy bear, a soft toy, a toy bear. Um, you've got your slippers on. Your hair is ruffled. Was the interview too early? What do you think? Is that a good thing to do to wear your <laughs> to wear your pajamas to an interview. What is your advice for this person? So think of your imagination. You can write the advice to the interviewee or for the interviewer. You could also write some advice for this man. What do you think this man should do? Okay, let's see. Uh, his PJs. Yeah, he's wearing his PJs. Okay, Danielle. Danielle says, you shouldn't keep your bear with you. Correct. Very good. OK, you shouldn't bring your bear to the interview. No, you should leave your bear at home or perhaps outside, though you might want your bear for comfort. Um, Bertha says, you should have woke up earlier. OK, great. Um, Bertha said you should have. So then we're using the Bertha, then we're using the present perfect, aren't we? we? You should have. This is the perfect tense, which means we need the past participle. You should have woken with an N. You should have woken up earlier. Good. Good advice. OK. Um, Anna, you should wear proper clothes, not pajamas. Correct. You should change. You should. Ah, Alessandra. So if we say you should, we need to use the infinitive, but without to. So without to, Alessandra, you should change your dress or you should change your clothes without to. Good. Uh, okay, Karma is using something different. You should try to wear a suit. Good. He should wear a suit. Ah, okay. Berta has made a, a suggestion for the boss, for the interviewer. 
you shouldn't judge a person for just one mistake, just for one mistake. Good. Very nice. Okay. Um, what else have we got? You should wake up earlier to be ready. Thank you, Elaine. <laughs> um, Robert, very nice. If I were you, I'd leave my teddy bear at home. Yeah, good. Excellent. <laughs> uh, nice outfit. Ah, okay. Eduardo, very nice. He's got what the interviewer might say. Nice outfit. It's the only one that fits our requirements. You should have come sooner. You should have come sooner. Make sure we use the uh, the past participle of come there, come instead of came. You should have come sooner. Okay. <laughs> um, so you're right, Eduardo. We don't know what the job is for. Maybe the job is a job where you have to wear pajamas. Um, Irina, you should set up the interview in the afternoon. Yes. What time is it? Maybe it is too early. Some of you got the same as me. Andreas, you should put on a shirt, suit and tie. Maurizio, you should set an alarm. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. You should wear a business suit is what I thought. Maybe because the interviewer is wearing a business suit. Um, you could try wearing smart clothes. It might help you with the interview. <laughs> but I, thank you, Eduardo. Good. I do think that you're right. Maybe the interview should be in the afternoon. Why do we do interviews in the morning? It's horrible. You're already nervous. Though, if the interview is in the afternoon, you'll spend all morning feeling nervous. And then you have to wait until the interview. Maybe it's better to do it in the morning to finish it. Then you can enjoy your day. Um, good. If I were you, Alex, lovely. If I were you, I'd invest in an alarm clock. Excellent. A good idea. Um, <laughs> very good imagination. Maybe it's an interview with a designer for pajamas. Yeah, he's wearing his designer pajamas because it's a, for a pajama interview. Excellent. Okay. Are you, let's look at the next scenario then. What advice do we give this person? Okay. The interviewer says, why should we hire you? And the interviewee replies, you have a job opening. Okay, why should we hire you? And they reply, well, because you have a job opening. A job opening here means you have a position available. Another way to say this sentence might be because you need somebody. You need somebody, so I am a person. You need a person, I am a person. Hire me. Why should we hire you? Um, oh, somebody's asking, Sergio says, can we use you must wear? Yes, but what is the difference? So the difference between you must wear a suit and you should wear a suit is must it means that you have to do it. It's an obligation. There is no option. It is a direction. We often use must when we want to tell somebody something that is very important and they have no option. At the moment, for example, in Spain, you must stay indoors. You must only go outdoors if you're going to a supermarket or a pharmacy. Okay, you must. There isn't an option. Um, but we say should for advice. It's not an obligation. You don't have to wear a suit. You can wear your pajamas. But we suggest, we think it's better that you don't. It's advice. So it's less strong. It's less strong. And often in English, we use should or could or maybe to be more polite because saying you must is very direct. And we, we don't have a very direct culture in the UK. Usually we are less direct, a bit more careful. Okay. Um, has anybody got any advice then for this gentleman in the orange tie? Uh, good. Okay. Um, from Belgium. He should show his interest for the job. Okay, excellent. First thing, you should show that you are interested in the job. That's a good way to reply to this question, isn't it? 
Virginia says, you should try convincing the interviewer of your qualities and virtues. Excellent. Thank you, Virginia. That's lovely. Your virtues, which means your good points, what's your, what your positives are, your strengths, your virtues. Lovely. Um, what else? Uh, somebody says, Richard, maybe what he could say. I am the person to bring your business further. I am the person to bring your business further. So he could say that, couldn't he? At the moment, his answer isn't very good. So what other answers could he give? <laughs> Carol says he should change his tie. Really? <laughs> what do? Okay, yeah, so he could change his tie. Maybe it's a bit too bright in orange. Um, but I don't think that's his biggest problem. <laughs> Though, but sure, yeah, he can change his tie. Okay. Um, any others? Let's see what I put. If I were you, I would say why you like the company. Good. Oh, that's all I got. Okay. Who else? Ad Angel. Angel. If I were you, I would think something more convincing to convince her. Yeah, to convince. A lovely verb there. To convince when we want to change somebody's mind. In an interview, you need to convince the interviewer that you are a good candidate. So you need to say something very positive about yourself. Um, Anna says, he should say something that makes a difference with other candidates. Okay, so we would say he should say something that maybe shows the difference between him and other candidates. Um, between him and other candidates. Good. Um, Luca, you should demonstrate your preparation. Yeah, this is a good question to say, to show you are prepared. Eduardo, <laughs> Eduardo's advice, you should leave immediately. You should leave immediately and be prepared to for to perform better in the next job interview. Okay, yeah. You have failed. There is nothing you can do. Just leave. Good. Um, Carol, he should smile a little bit to give a good impression. Yeah, he doesn't look very happy, does he? Smile a bit more. Uh, and Irina, excellent. If I were you, I would share my previous work experience. Thank you, Irina. That's a really nice sentence. Okay, and I think this is our last scenario. So here we have the interviewer. I'm sorry that all of these interviewers and interviewees are white men, white men. <laughs> not, not very diverse. I'm sorry about that. I usually try to use diverse pictures, but this isn't very diverse. Okay. Why did you leave your last job? And this person who looks quite young, maybe he is a teenager. The company relocated and didn't tell me where. Well, first of all, what does that mean? The company relocated. When you relocate, you change location, really. So if a company relocates, it moves from London to Paris or from Dublin to Edinburgh. It moves from Madrid to Berlin. They relocate. It doesn't have to be a different country. It could be from Madrid to Valencia. Um, and they didn't tell me where. So this person, the company left and they didn't know where they'd gone. OK, so what advice can we give this person? I've got the translation here. Relocate, tras, uh, trasladar or re reubicar. reubicar. We can say relocate for people. I relocated to Alicante last year, for example. Um, so what can this person say? Why did you leave your last job? All right, what should he say to that question? Um, is this a good answer or should he say a different answer? Or do you have an advice for the interviewer? Do you have any advice? Okay, let's have a look. Any, any suggestions? Um, good. Danielle says to change country or city for relocate. Excellent. Good. Luca, you shouldn't say this. <laughs> yes, good. So first of all, don't say this. Excellent. Uh, Irina's advice is you should have a GPS system so you can find them. Good. Okay. What else could he do? Let's see what I wrote. You should try giving a better explanation. 
Yeah, what could that explanation be? If I were you, I would say uh, perhaps uh, it wasn't the best fit for me or I decided I left my previous position because um, I wasn't able to relocate with the company, maybe. Um, somebody said, uh, could we use relocated in the same city but other situation, other location? Yeah, yeah, you can say relocate uh, offices. We relocate it. I think so we often use the word move, right? We are moving offices. I am moving house. I'm moving flat. That's a verb we often use when we move, especially in the same city. You can use relocate, but it, it does usually mean a bigger move. Maybe in London, you might relocate from South London to North London because it's such a big city. But when we when we change houses, but somewhere quite near, we usually just say move. Um, equally, we can say move when we change countries. So I moved to Spain, but relocate sounds more official. So people use that for businesses. It's a more official word. Um, Alisa says, you should be honest. Okay, yeah, all right, he should be honest. If they relocated and didn't tell him, maybe he should tell them the truth. Alexander says, if I were you, I would say that the last job didn't reveal my potential. That is a very smart way to make it sound like the last job was the problem. Um, Angel, if I were you, I would be more smart and I would try to say something more credible. Credible, excellent word again, Angel. Angel, Angel, probably, Angel. Uh, more credible, which means more believable, but also more, it sounds more, a stronger answer. Um, I'd like to improve my position and I'm looking for new job opportunities. Good. Maria Angela, I am not, we wouldn't say more satisfied if we're saying not. So maybe we would say I am not satisfied enough rather than I'm not more satisfied. I'm not satisfied enough with my current position, too much routine, and I would like to give more creative contribution. Oh, Mariana, that's a lovely sentence. I love it. Okay, good. All right. Thank you very much. So we already have some experts in giving advice. Okay. Um, we're almost coming to the end of class today, and I did want to talk a little bit about skills. Um, in one of my previous classes, I talked about um, person specifications. So I'm just going to go through this so that in case it's helpful, if you are currently looking for work, currently looking for a job, um, and you want to try to improve your vocabulary. A lot of my students find that their English is okay when they're speaking, but it is their vocabulary that is the challenge. And when your vocabulary is small, it is difficult to understand people and it is difficult to say credible answers in a job interview or to say convincing answers in a job interview. But how can we improve our vocabulary in a smart way, in, a, in an intelligent way? And I think using real job adverts and real uh, job descriptions is a good way to do this. This is a real job advert for a administration role in London. And I looked at this advert and I looked at the skills and ability you need for the job. And I think here is a great way to improve your vocabulary. You should read the job description, find one that you that you think is interesting, read the job description and circle the skills, okay? We know what good means, we know what ability means, we know what excellent means, but we want to circle the new skills, the specific skills needed for the job. And this is the vocabulary we need to learn. Why? Because this is the vocabulary you need to use in your CV. This is the vocabulary you need to use in your cover letter. 
And this is the vocabulary you need to use at interview. From the job description, we can find these keywords, these key bits of vocabulary, make a vocabulary list and learn it. However you like to learn it, maybe you use Quizlet, maybe you use a different program or flashcards or lists on paper, but learn it so that you know it without having to see it written down. And once we, and that is the first thing I think, this is a really good way to improve your vocabulary for job interviews. Then, once we have done that, we need to make this specific to ourselves. So I've got a few keywords here that I think a lot of people talk about when we were in job interviews. We've got some key skills. I'm going to read them through and then I have the um, the Spanish translation. I know a lot of you aren't from Spain. Sorry, I'm sorry. Um, maybe the Spanish translation helps, but I will explain the meanings. Okay. As I read them, I want you to see which ones you think you have. Okay. So, attention to detail. This means when you look at all of the details and you are very specific in your work. So maybe you use numbers very correctly. Line management. In Eng uh, this was difficult to translate. In English, line management means when you are responsible for managing uh, junior employees. So maybe you have five people in your team and you manage them. They are your responsibility. But I couldn't find the word in Spanish. I don't know if anybody knows uh, the word for that, um, to manage people. We have motivated, which means enthusiastic, computer skills, so technology, IT skills, creativity, when you can think of new things, new ideas, communication or language skills. We all have that because we are all bilingual at least. Maybe you speak more than more than two languages. Ambitious is when you want to succeed. You want to have a lot of success um, and you have big dreams, big goals. Multitasking is when you can do several things at once. Hardworking is when you um, you always work hard. You're committed. You're always on time. You you work a lot. You're dedicated. People skills is your ability to work with other people and teamwork skills is working in a team and finally dependable or reliable. Um, now all of these, which are your best skills here? We've got some people coming in. Alexander, my best skills are teamwork, computer skills and being ambitious. Good. Um, cool. Okay. So Think about which are your best skills. And now we are coming to the end of class. But my homework for you is to choose maybe two or three. And you need to start thinking of examples of when you used these skills. The biggest mistake I see in job interviews and CVs is that people say, I am ambitious or I have good communication skills but they don't give an example that demonstrates that skill. They don't explain the skill. So we have to think of specific examples for each one um, and, and practice talking about them so that we can convince the interviewer, so that we sound credible. So maybe pick two or three of these and try to write for homework, try to write some examples or try to say some stories about when you use them. Um, ah, and Anna, thank you. Line management may be capacidad de gestión de personas. Thank you very much. Ah, see, I'm learning something too. Okay, it's almost the end of class. So let me um, go back to stop sharing my screen. Um, Thank you so much for coming and for your participation. I hope it was useful. My name is Sarah Rose. Um, we're doing live streams next week as well. 
I do general English classes, but my speciality is CVs and job interviews. So if you are interested, if you have a job interview or you need to improve your skills for job interviews or you need to correct your CV, write a cover letter, these are the kinds of classes I offer. And you can click on my name on the italki page um, to book a class with me or to book a trial class if you want to find out more. And you can see all of the teachers on the italki page and see their profiles as well. They're all wonderful. Um, and there's many more classes today. So thank you so much for coming. I hope you have a lovely weekend. Um, and I hope to see you soon uh, for the last live stream classes, we think next week. Um, bye bye. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Jacked. Jacked. Does that, does that mean like hench? What does hench mean? Like say you go to the gym. Don't answer back with a slang word. <laughs> so the British equivalent of jacked would be hench, I think. So if someone's like really ripped. Yes, exactly. Okay. So hench. Go to the gym, work out a yeah, lot. Like, Whoa, look at him, he's so jacked. We would say hench. Number two, British. Peng. 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 P-E-N-G. Peng. Like someone being hanged on the head with something? Or? <laughs> I'm just thinking of peng. Peng. It's similar, I don't know. I guess it's a little similar. Um, no. Give me an example. Uh, okay, so for example, say you're eating a cake. It's delicious. You can say, oh, this is peng. Does it just mean delicious? Mm, you could use it in other contact texts as well. Just be like, it hits the spot. No? Yeah, but I could also say your eyes are pegged. Oh. Or a person is pegged. Just to mean like extraordinarily awesome? Basically. Oh, like if, you, yeah. if you're talking about a person, you might even say pegging. Pegging. Like he's a pegging. Okay. This is mostly so like he's like a 10. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So like the, like the top of the top. Yeah, basically. Number three, American. I blew it. I blew it. I blew it. What a nightmare. I blew it. Yeah. So that means that you've completely ruined the situation. Yeah. Yeah. Say like, I didn't make it into, didn't make it into school. So my parents will not be proud of me. I blew it. Yeah. When you locked up late to work, don't really ever do that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm never late. <laughs> Number three, British. Having a mare. Having a mare. Having a mare. A nightmare. Like, horrible, real nightmare. In realistic, in reality, basically. Very good. Okay. That's exactly that it. a lot easier than that. Obviously. Yeah. Well, I thought I'd go and spend you. Having a mare. You were having a mare before. I was having a mare before. Yeah. Not understanding anything she was saying. Yeah, exactly. So there you have it, there's our British and American slang. Tell us what you thought of it. Did you understand it? And we'll see you next time. My name is Wong Win. Tentola. It's really amazing thing for me. From uh, from Atlantic, I can meet people around, the world, and they can give me more energy to live and more inspiration to live the world also. Very magical, yeah. When uh, when I can go on lesson, I feel that uh, I'm doing a very good job, and then working at home is a very wonderful thing. So, uh, I think that I can do something, and uh, and I, I'm doing something here. I think that I can uh, say idea and talk with people. That is the first 
motivation for me to come here. The second thing that I can have some money for my life to make my life become better and comfortable. It's very wonderful website of RDK because RDK is the connection between the every people in the world. Them, we can say uh, each person have uh, their own experience and their own knowledge and their own way of living. And when we meet these people and within that we are we are discovering a new universe or a new area or something like that. <laughs> so it's wonderful that we have this diversity and we should just learn from each other. But if you at least just a second language and expose yourself to a second culture. Not only do you understand better, but you understand your own culture better. And if most people just did that and were talking openly and honestly about themselves and other people, I don't think there would be any diversity problems. Because we're all learning from each other. He's a very good student. He studied very well and he just learned for, you know, he just only studied for one month, but now he can speak very much with me. Later on, yeah, the student and the teacher can meet in uh, in a different country, and then uh, the relationship be become very good. We drink coffee together, and we uh, go uh, and I ride a motorbike, and I take them uh, along uh, somewhere beautiful together, and we uh, talk together, and then they come back to their country, and we become teacher and student again. We study again, yeah. The number of refugees worldwide has reached historic levels as tens of millions of people seek asylum from conflicts in their home countries. Even for those able to reach countries willing to take them in, rebuilding their lives and careers in unfamiliar societies often proves challenging. For one group of refugees living in Istanbul, teaching online Arabic lessons to students across the world has offered a way to overcome these obstacles and establish new hope. As well as earning income, they have been able to share their experiences with people from different cultures and backgrounds, cultivating meaningful relationships with students. My name is Rahaf and I'm from Latakia, Syria. Previously, I had a normal but busy life. My name is Abdullah and I'm a Syrian guy from Homs, the capital of funny jokes. Hello, my, my name is Amr. Uh, I'm an Arabic teacher on italki. Uh, I'm from Egypt. Hi, I'm Hossam. I'm from Syria, Al Haseka, and I'm a teacher on Italki now. Three years ago, I came to Turkey, to Istanbul. Many challenges uh, came in one time. Leaving a country is not, or leaving your home. This is one. It's like fish out of the group. I mean, yeah, my, the challenge that my career is almost dead. This is the only challenge now. Online teaching, yeah, it, it solves this problem, of course, because you can just be wherever and get online and start your class. What Italki offered me is like new students I have never met from another continent, way far from me, wants, they want to like learn my language. I feel like this is like, I feel sometimes emotional. Italki, Bessa College and NGO Small Projects Istanbul are working together on this project. You know, it's important for people to kind of see um, and get to know someone who's experiencing a difficult time or who um, has had a, a difficult past and to um, just remember people are people are people. We need to remember that, um, you know, we're, we have a shared humanity and I think that gets lost a lot in the media or in the news. I'm teaching Arabic for first year students of Arabic in America. Uh, we both enjoy teaching and learning online. Uh, it's an amazing experience for me as a teacher. I find it so helpful for me, also for the students. Going into it, people might like 
like have these assumptions that you're supposed to like learn something about refugees or like understand something new but i think it's like most valuable to realize that like you're not really learning anything new other than that like this is like just just another person just like you my tutor muhammad was like so nice and so willing to work with my level of speaking and comprehension at the beginning teaching online was a new experience for me and it had a, a lot of challenges but now i'm used to it and honestly i am enjoying teaching arabic on italki i care now i care more I care more about the language, I care more about my students. Teaching Arabic is something valuable for me. Maybe give me hope or I feel gain hope. I, it's a reward for me. Hi, I'm a language learning app. Can we move on? This is a dog. I don't have a dog. Repeat after me. This person eats bread. I want to practice English for my job interview. Shh. Incorrect. You haven't reached this lesson yet. Repeat after me. This person eats bread. Fine. This person eats bread. That's better. Moving on. ¿Cansado de aplicaciones de idiomas inflexibles? Usa italki. Aprender como tú quieras aprender y estudiar cualquier idioma con nativos. Meet Peter. He is learning Chinese. He was studying on his own with textbooks, flashcards and apps, but is still having problems with basic conversation. This is Maria. She loves learning English, but she doesn't have many opportunities to use it. With italki, Peter and Maria are able to get personal online lessons to help them become fluent in a foreign language. You can start learning a language on italki today. Just follow these three simple steps. 1. Select the language. English, Spanish, Chinese, French, Japanese. Italki has teachers for every language. 2. Select the teacher. With italki, you can choose from thousands of experienced teachers from all over the world. And three, schedule a lesson. Online language lessons are the next best thing to living in a foreign country. With italki, you'll have a personal language teacher and real conversations with native speakers. Every day, thousands of people are connecting to international teachers through italki. Find a teacher today and become fluent in a foreign language. Hi, my name is Tom. I'm from the US, I'm a chemical engineer, and I'm passionate about language learning. I've used italki to learn eight languages to a conversational level. I grew up in Colorado, where I was exposed to many different cultures, which cultivated my interest in languages. One of the first languages I became conversational in was Norwegian. I decided to book a trip to Norway. To prepare, I found a group class with around seven people. Not only were they extremely expensive, it was around $40 to $50 per lesson, Progress was also frustratingly slow due to the size of the class. I heard about italki from a positive view from a famous polyglot. I was amazed to discover that I could learn any language I want, one-on-one, -on -one, and for the fraction of the price as offline classes. I thought, how is this even possible? I immediately signed up with two teachers in Norwegian. One teacher, we would have conversation lessons and go through a textbook. And with the other teacher, we would go through worksheets and chat about random things. So essentially, I structured the classes in a way that would suit my own learning style, which never would have happened without Italki. Within a year, I was relatively fluent in Norwegian. I was so happy that I could actually go to the country. Hello, Atsuko. 
Hello everyone, I'm Axko. Thank you for visiting my lesson. I live in Bangkok, Thailand. In Bangkok, April is the hottest month in the world. Yeah, now I want to ask you, where are you watching this live streaming? Where do you live? Please write on the chat. Where are you watching this live streaming? And I appreciate if you write you've ever studied Japanese before. Today it's very quiet. Okay, let's get started. Today, I'm going to uh, introduce how to say I like or I don't like and some useful grammar related to this topic. So let's get started. Okay, please see the picture. Okay, let's fix the vocabulary first. Ah, gracias. Ah, Milan. Gracias. Ah, is it second time? I remember you. <laughs> okay, you're a beginner. Don't worry. This lesson is designed so that everybody can understand, even if uh, they don't have any experience of learning Japanese. Okay, it's very easy. Okay, let's check the vocabulary. Maybe both, most of the vocabulary you already familiar. Okay, repeat after me. Sushi, tempura, ramen, chocolate, coffee, sashimi, okonomiyaki, cake, ice cream, Kocha, paella, pizza, pasta, wine, osake, beer. Maybe you already know the word sake, but I recommend, especially for women, not to use the word sake. Osake is much better. When you use the word sake, the quietness goes down, okay, or sake. Alexu-san, hola, soy Asco, no soy Asco, sino Asco, mi bienvenido. Hi, Andrea-san, Germany, konnichiwa. Hi, eh, ja. Hi, これは sushi ですね。I like sushi. I like sushi in Japanese. Watashi wa sushi ga suki desu. Repeat after me. Watashi wa sushi ga suki desu. Watashi means I. Wa is called particle. So wa works as a topic maker. And now let's practice now. Sushi. And we add ga. Suki desu means like. This GA is pronounced generally in Eastern Japan, ma, sushi ma, In Western Japan, sushi ga, ga, Both are correct, so you can pronounce as you like, whichever easier for you to pronounce. I'm from Eastern Japan, so I pronounce sushi ma, ma, sushi okay. Then let's make sentence. How about I like tempura? I like tempura. Watashi wa tempura ga suki desu. Okay. I like ramen. Watashi wa ramen ga 
possible. Okay. Andrea, can you hear me now? Can you hear me? I'll speak louder. I, yeah, I like drink. I like coffee. Coffee. Watashi wa kohi ga suki de. I like, um, I like paella. I like paella. Watashi wa paella ga suki de. Okay. Then please make sentence about what you like. If you don't know how to say the word in Japanese, ask me on the chat. This is right on the chat. Use this phone and choose one noun. In my case, watashi wa sushi ga suki desu. Watashi wa sashimi ga suki desu. Watashi wa kiiru ga suki desu. Then next, negative form. What if I don't like sushi? Negative form is Watashi wa sushi ga suki ja arimasen. Okay, repeat after me. Watashi wa sushi ga suki ja arimasen. Then what if I don't like Sashimi. I don't like sashimi. Watashi wa sashimi ga suki ja arimasen. I don't like beer. Watashi wa kiiru ga suki ja arimasen. Okay. So can you make sentence about what you don't like using negative form? Choose one noun. And use this structure. If you don't know how to say mm, uh, the food, drink you don't like, ask me on the chat. Andrea, can you hear me now? Okay, and another sentence. Everybody knows, ah, konnichiwa. I can't hear clearly. Ah, okay, let me check my microphone. Alexa, ramen ga suki ja arimasu. Ah, so desu ka. I thought ramen is very popular among the world.
Can you hear me now? Ah, okay now. Ah, okay. Hi, sorry for how you kept you ready. Hi, eh, adverb. I like sushi a lot. I like sushi a lot. Watashi wa sushi ga totemo suki desu. Or watashi wa sushi ga daisuki desu. Daisuki desu is casual dan totemo. And totemo and daisuki can't use together. Okay? Then how about I like ramen a lot. I like ramen a lot. Watashi wa ramen ga totemo suki desu. Or watashi wa ramen ga daisuki desu. Okay. Then what if I don't like ramen so much? So much. Not so much is amari and negative. Amari suki ja arimasen. Amari suki ja arimasen. When we use the adverb amari, the conjugation is always, always negative. Okay. Then what if I don't like wine so much? I don't like wine so much. Watashi wa wine ga amari suki ja arimasen. I don't like beer so much. Watashi wa biru ga amari suki ja arimasen. Okay, then next, I don't like sushi at all. I don't like sushi at all. Not at all is zenzen suki ja arimasen. Okay, when we use zenzen, the adverb is always negative. Okay. Then what if I don't like cake at all? I don't like cake at all. Cake wa keiki. Keiki. Yes. Watashi wa keiki ga zenzen suki ja arimasen. Negative form of suki ja arimasen is rather soft. There is more straight, strong expression. Kirai desu. I hate. Kirai desu. Then how about I hate sake. I hate sake. Watashi wa sake ga kirai desu. Watashi wa sake ga kirai desu. This is very straight, strong. And emphasis. Watashi wa sushi ga dai kirai desu. Stronger. Dai kirai desu. Very strong. Okay. Then, Please make sentence about a sentence with one of these adjectives. Okay. Choose one noun what you like or you don't like, and make sentence with one of these adjectives. Totemo daisuki, amari zenzen kirai dai kirai. Okay. Please write on the chat. And if you don't know how to say the noun in Japanese, ask me on the chat. Watashi wa kocha ga totemo suki desu. Evelina san, kocha ga 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 totemo suki desu. Watashi mo desu. わたしはこうちゃがとてもすきですオッケーですわたしはすしがとてもすきですはいオッケーですはいじゃあ、next わたしはすしがすきですわたしはてんぷらがすきですwhen I want to say two nouns first sentence is わたしはすしがすきです and second sentence Tempura mo suki desu. Okay, then please repeat after me two sentences. Watashi wa sushi ga suki desu. Tempura mo suki desu. Okay, mo means also too. Then how about I like, um, I like pizza. I like pasta too. Let's make two sentences. First sentence is, Watashi wa pizza ga suki desu. Second sentence, 
パスタも好きです。And the second sentence, we can omit the noun, omit the, omit the subject, 私は。ね。はい。じゃあ、next. うん。じゃあ、コーヒー。I like coffee. Coffee. I like tea too. 私はコーヒーが好きです。紅茶も好きです。Okay, then, this,、uh, we can put it in one sentence. 私は、じゃあ私は寿司が好きです。天ぷらも好きです。私は寿司と天ぷらが好きです。私は寿司と天ぷらが好きです。A と B means A and B. But、uh, this to is not completely same with and in English. In English, and can connect noun and noun, verb and verb, like come and go, and adjective and adjective, like pretty and cool. But in Japanese, The particle to can connect only noun and noun.、ね、noun to noun. Only noun. This. Hi. So let's practice. I like, I like pizza and pasta. I like pizza and pasta. Can you make a sentence? Okay. ピザとパスタが好きです。Okay, then next, I like chocolate and ice cream. Chocolate and ice cream. Okay. 私はチョコレートとアイスクリームが好きです。Okay, next, the question. Uh, do you like sushi? Do you like sushi? Question は、えー、寿司が好きですか Just add ka in the end of the sentence and intonation is up. Okay? 寿司が好きですか When answer is yes, yes is hi in Japanese. Hi, 好きです。And the answer is, when the answer is no, いいえ、好きじゃありません。ネガティブフォームですね。Okay. Then,、um, じゃあ、make a question.、Uh, do you like, do you like 刺身 Do you like 刺身 Question is, 刺身が好きですか My answer is, はい、大好きです。はい、大好きです。You can use these adjectives too. はい、大好きです。いいえ、あまり好きじゃありません。ね。Then, question, do you like お好み焼き Do you like お好み焼き Question は、お好み焼きが好きですかアレックスさん、刺身が好きですかはい。私は大好きです。アレックスさんは刺身が好きですかみなさんは刺身が好きですか私は大好きです。And this sentence pattern can be used not only for food and drink. We can use it for, for example, various activities, things. I like movie. I like movie. Watashi wa eiga ga suki desu. I like sports. Watashi wa sports ga suki desu. I like to sing. Watashi wa uta ga suki desu. I like to dance. Watashi wa dance ga suki desu. I like to travel. 
私は旅行が好きです。I like books. 私は本が好きです。I like games. ゲームはゲーム in Japanese. 私はゲームが好きです。I like cooking. 私は料理が好きです。I like to study. 私は勉強が好きです。I like to work. 私は仕事が好きです。皆さんは仕事が好きですか ?OK, last one. I like Japan. 私は日本が好きです。Okay, 皆さんは日本語の勉強が好きですか、はい、じゃあ、NEXT。はい。Left side はマンゴーです。Right side はドリアン。日本語はドリアンです。私はマンゴーが好きです。私はドリアンが好きじゃありません。好きです。好きじゃありません。コントラストです。When I want to say this contrast, えーアレクさん、ファッツ、ファッツダーサガ、パーティクルミーン、うん、ガ、is、うん、the object of what we like。object maker for like this。but not for all the object。for example, I read a book. I read a book. 私は本を読みます。in this case, particle for object is お、本を、but When we use the adjective 好きです we have to use が for the, as the object maker.、ね、That depends on what、uh, kind of what, which verb or adjective come after the word.、Okay. はい。じゃあ、えー、コントラストです。私はマンゴーは好きですが、ドリアンは好きじゃありません。Okay. アレクサン、You're welcome, でなだ。はい。わ、for contrast, this わ is called わ、for contrast, this. Okay. And the ga in the center is like while in English. Okay. Another example. 私はビールが好きです。私はワインが好きじゃありません。好きです。好きじゃありません。contrast ですね。ビールは好きですが、ワインは好きじゃありません。Okay. Another example. Left side はロックンロール、ロック、ロックです。Right side, ジャズです。ロック好きです。ジャズ好きじゃありません。コントラストです。ロックは好きですが、ジャズは好きじゃありません。It's quite long, but okay, try to repeat me, repeat after me. ロックは好きですが、ジャズは好きじゃありません。Okay, last example. Cat. Do you know how to say cat in Japanese? Neko des. Neko. And dog. Inu. Neko. Suki des. Inu. Suki ja arimasen. Contrast des. I'm sure you already, you can already make the sentence for contrast. Neko wa suki des ga. Inu wa suki ja arimasen. You repeat after me. Neko wa suki des ga. 犬は好きじゃありません。OK。はい。あ、エベリナさん、さようなら。<笑> See you soon。はい、さようなら。
。OK です。はい。ベン、ベ、ベオンティムさん。Hello, こんにちは。Where do you live? ベオンティムさん。ベオンタイムさん。ベオンティムさん。Where do you live? Can you write on the chat? Then next. There are, there are many Japanese food.、ね、Japanese food in Japanese, Nihon Ryori. Nihon Ryori. Ryori is cuisine.、ねはい、let's check the vocabulary. Repeat after me. Sushi. Tempura. Ramen. Sukiyaki. 刺身、お好み焼き、うどん、焼き鳥、しゃぶしゃぶ、カツ丼、牛丼。Do you know all of these foods? すし、天ぷら、わかりますね。ラーメン、うん、very famous ですね。はい。え、what is お好み焼き？あ、お好み焼き、プレスプロバルお好み焼き、エマドリーですね。お好み焼きは、えー、on the hot plate、uh,、bake、um,、flour、cabbage and pork and、uh, eh, add sauce, sauce, black sauce. And some people put mayonnaise too. It's very tasty, especially in Osaka and Hiroshima. Okonomiyaki is famous. You should try. It's very tasty. Hi. Ja, eh, watashi wa, ah, Alexan de Nada. Hi, watashi wa, mmm, sushi ga ski des, sashimi mo ski des, okonomiyaki mo ski des. Number one. What is my number one? Number one wa sashimi desu. Sashimi. When I want to say number one, category, in this case, category is Nihon Ryori. Nihon Ryori de sashimi ga ichiban suki desu. Yeah, repeat after me. Nihon Ryori de sashimi ga ichiban suki desu. Okay. Category. De. Noun. What you like. Ga. Ichiban means number one des. Number one. Ichiban. Suki des. Then what if number one is. Number one is ramen. Number one is ramen. Nihon ryori de. Ramen ga ichiban suki des. Then how about number one is. アレクさん、豚骨ラーメンがとても好きです。おお、豚骨ラーメン、ゆの感じ。おお、ノポエルコメール、豚骨ラーメン、すごいふえるって。ね。うん。はい。じゃあ、えー、っと、what if number one is? オッケー、じゃあ、エグザンプル of アレックスさん、豚骨ラーメン。アレックスさんは日本料理で、豚骨ラーメンが一番好きです。ね、はい。Then, eh, okay, let's change the category. Spain 料理 Spain 料理 Spanish cuisine this. Spain 料理 Adobo さん How should I pronounce? Hello, こんにちは。ありがとうございます。はい。じゃあ、スペイン料理の日本人の pronunciation this. Repeat after me. パエリア生ハム、オムレツ、ガスパチョ、アヒージョ、フィレウア、コロッケ、ポテトサラダ。And category is スペイン料理。はい。Uh, my number one is 
Mm, it's very difficult to choose only one, but okay. We have to practice, so I have to choose one. So, ahijo, number one, ahijo desu. So, category is Spain Ryori. Spain Ryori de ahijo ga ichiban suki desu. Okay, repeat after me. Spain Ryori de ahijo ga ichiban suki desu. Then what if number one is paella? Paella. David san, Spain ryori de hamon ga ichiban suki desu. Hamon, nama hamu desu. Hamon wa nihongo de nama hamu desu. David san wa Spain ryori de nama hamu ga ichiban suki desu ne. Okay desu. Then next category. Hi, drink beverage. This category is nomimono. Okay, let's check the vocabulary. Repeat after me. Wine. Osake. Beer. Whiskey. Gyunyu. Coffee. Kocha. Yokcha Juice Cola Stay at home san Konichiwa Welcome to my lesson. Okay, then let's choose number one from here. Mm, nomimono number one wa eh, in my case kohi kohi kana kohi. So nomimono de コーヒーが一番好きです。ね、飲み物でコーヒーが一番好きです。Then what if number one is wine? Number one is wine. 飲み物でワインが一番好きです。ね。Then what if number one is uh, 緑茶, 緑茶, green tea is green tea. 緑茶 is number one. 飲み物で緑茶が一番好きです。Okay, like this. はい, right. so next category, fruit. 果物です。果物。Okay, repeat after me. オレンジ, バナナ, あ、えっと、マンゴー、キウイ、イチゴ、メロン、リンゴ、桃、パイナップル、梨、ブドウ、uh, actually, in Japan, we have two types of nashi pair, isn't it? And Western nashi, long nashi, and Japanese nashi, it's round. Yeah, it has very different taste from European nashi, and both are very tasty, so you should try. Okay, Hi, okay let's make ichiban sentence. Mm, in my case, my number one is mango. Mango, so I can say, Kudamono de mango ga ichiban suki desu. Okay, Kudamono de mango ga ichiban suki desu. Then, what if number one is, Tabito san, Kudamono de budo ga ichiban suki desu? Ah, budo wa desu ne. Eh, long vowel, choto spelling ga. ブドウ。ブドウ。ブドウ。ブドウ。ブドウ。ブドウ。ブドウ。ブドウ。ブドウ。ブドウ。ブドウ。ブドウ。ブドウ。ブドウ。ブドウ。ブドウ。ブドウ
じゃあ、NEXT。アレクサン、果物で、梨が一番好きです。アレクサン、Have you ever tried Japanese 梨日本の梨 Not long one, round one. It's very juicy and tasty. You should try. はい、じゃあ、カテゴリーチェンジしますね。はい、スポーツです。スポーツ。アレクさん、あ、ah,、you never tried Japanese nashi, you should try. <笑>はい。えー、じゃあ、えー、スポーツ、let's check the vocabulary. サッカー、テニス、バレーボール、バスケットボール。Why it's so long? Because in Japanese language, each consonant must has vowel. That's why there are many syllables. バスケットボールですね。はい、next one. ゴルフ。水泳。マラソン。バドミントン。柔道。空手。はい、じゃあ、Let's make sentence. うん、うん、in my case, number one is 水泳です、水泳。カテゴリー is スポーツ。So, sentence is スポーツで水泳が一番好きです。水泳、スイミングですね。スポーツで水泳が一番好きです。Then, what if number one is サッカーサッカー Sentence is sports でサッカーが一番好きです。Okay. Then next question. I want to ask you number one for each category.、ね、question は、アレクさん、スポーツでイヤイドが一番好きです。あ、武道ですね。うん、かっこいい。イヤイド。え、どこでしますか ?Where do you practice? はい、じゃあスポーツで柔道が一番好きあダビッドさん、柔道しますか ?Are you running 柔道すごい。マドリッドでいいアイドル。へえ、すごいですね。うーん、クール。はい。じゃあ、クエスチョンフォームです。はい。カテゴリーで、何が一番好きですか日本料理で何が一番好きですかスポーツで何が一番好きですか ?Like this.Okay. Then, あ、ダビッドさんは、When you are a child, you practice judo. うん、Okay. はい、じゃあ、I'll ask you a question. 日本料理で何が一番好きですか日本料理で何が一番好きですか ?In the answer, you don't need to repeat the category again. Noun が一番好きです is enough. 日本料理で何が一番好きですか私は刺身が一番好きです。皆さんは Ah,、uh, maybe there are two Alex san ですね Okay, can you make your own answer? カツ丼が一番好きです。うん、カツ丼、美味しいですね。お好み焼きが一番好きです。あ、ダービッドさん、you know a lot of kanji. いいですね。お好み焼き。ダビッドさん、Do you cook お好み焼き by yourself?
I also want to know. あ、いいえ。うん。店で食べます。You eat at the restaurant. ね。はい。じゃあ、スペイン料理。カテゴリー、スペイン料理です。皆さんは、スペイン料理で何が一番好きですかダビッドさん、料理が下手です。ああ。<笑> No problem ですね。There are many good お好み焼き restaurants. はい。スペイン料理で何が一番好きですか私はアヒージョとサルモレッホが好きですね。皆さんは食べますかスペイン料理。私は毎週食べます。<笑> Here in Bangkok, there are some good Spanish restaurants. ガスパチョが一番好きです。あ、そうですか。ガスパチョ。うん。美味しいですね。うん。えー、アナザーアレクサン。あ、アレクサ中国人です。あ、そうですか。うん、うん、うん、うん。スペイン人のアレクサンと中国人のアレクサンがいますね。はい。OK です。じゃあ、トピックチェンジ。飲み物。飲み物で何が一番好きですかお私はビールとコーヒーと緑茶と、うん、it's difficult to choose only one ですね。飲み物で何が一番好きですかあ、あの、スペインのクララも美味しいですね。クララ。ビールとファンタレモン、クララも美味しいですね。お、美味しいです。え、エモニーさん。エモニーさんはどこにいますか今。えっと、中国人のアレクさんはグルーアップにオーストラリア。あ、そうですか。オーストラリア。ロングバーウェルです。オーストラリア。うん、I've never been. 日本人はオーストラリアが大好きですよ。緑茶が一番好きです。えー、アレックス、えっと、スペイン人のアレックスさんはマドリッドで緑茶を飲みます。うん、ダビッドさん、ワインが一番好きです。そうですか。いいですね。はい。By the way, in Thailand, we can't buy alcohol until April 30th. です。うん。はい。じゃあ。カテゴリーチェンジ。果物。皆さんは果物で何が一番好きですか私はマンゴーが一番好きです。皆さんは果物で何が一番好きですかエーモニーさん、プエルトリコ。ああ、そうですか。プエルトリコ。エントセサブラスエスパニョールの。出身です。おお、you know difficult word ね。出身です。リンゴとキウイが一番好きです。OK です。ダビッチさん、リンゴは日本語ですから、ひらがな。OK です。キウイは from English ですから、カタカナですよ。キ、わかりますかキウイ、これ。カタカナです。キウイ、私も好きです。私はゴールドキウイが好きです。美味しいですね。はい。じゃあ、えー、っと、ラストカテゴリー、スポーツ。はい。スポーツで何が一番好きですかスポーツで何が一番好きですか私は水泳が一番好きです。But of course, all the swimming pools are, are closed in Bangkok. ですね。Can you make your own answer? スポーツで何が一番好きですかエモニーさん、スペイン語と英語とイタリア語。うーん
すごいですね。No puedo estudiar italiano porque si、sí, estudio italiano, mi español、uh, será mezcla con italiano. <笑> estudio solo español. はい。じゃあ、next. Let's study more adjectives. Adjectives. Okay. Look at the picture. Okay, repeat after me. These are very useful, simple, basic adjectives. Okay, first one expensive, takai, inexpensive, yasui. Next one, tall, high, takai. So, expensive, tall, high, all a r same adjective. Takai, yes. Hi, next, low, short, hikui, fast, quick, rapid, hayai. Slow, osoi, interesting, funny, omoshiroi, boring, tsumaranai, quiet, shizuka, lively, nigiaka, difficult, muzukashi, easy, kantan, famous, yume. And next adjective has two meanings. Beautiful or clean. Okay, same adjective is kire, kind, shinsetsu, kakkoi, handsome. Handsome came from English word handsome. And handsome can,、um, can be used only for men and about、uh, face. But kakkoi can be used for men, women, or things like. Kuruma car, kakoi kuruma, ne? Hai, or lifestyle, kakoi, ne? Hai, wider meaning. Last one, tasty, oishi, ne? Hai, ja, let's make sentence with、uh, adjectives. Ja, there are many topics. Ja, let's talk about sushi, sushi. Which adjectives are good to describe sushi? Sushi is delicious. Sushi is delicious. So let's use adjective oishi. Oishi. Hi.、Um, Alex, a Chinese Alex, a question. Tonkotsu ramen wine was ski deska. Eh, tonkotsu ramen wine. Tonkotsu ramen with wine. I've never tried. でも私は豚骨ラーメンが好きじゃありませんから食べません。すみません。はい。じゃあ、Let's make sentence. 寿司 is tasty. OK? 寿司トピック。寿司は美味しいアジティブです。寿司は美味しいです。OK? Then let's change the adjective. 寿司 It's expensive. ね、寿司 is expensive. Expensive は高い。寿司は高いです。寿司は高いです。ね、Then, how about,、うん、じゃあ、東京。東京。Which adjective is used to describe 東京東京は、あ、lively, にぎやか。いいですね。東京は、にぎやかです。東京はにぎやかです。or maybe interesting, 面白い。東京 is interesting. 東京は面白いです。ね。はい。アレクサさん、you've never tried 豚骨ラーメン。あ、I've tried and I don't like, I'm sorry, I don't like 豚骨ラーメン。But I know there are many people who love 豚骨ラーメン in this world. So my taste is very Different. Hi. So, it's Mount Fuji. Mount Fuji. Fuji san. Fuji san. Fuji san is high. Fuji san is high. Takai. Fuji san wa takai des. Ne? Hi. So, Fuji san wa takai des. Okay. So, then, kara. There are some other adjectives which can be used to describe Fujisan. 
、えー、富士山の綺麗、綺麗ですね。綺麗、高い、綺麗。I want to say both. 富士山は高いです。そして、綺麗です。富士山は高いです。そして、綺麗です。We can connect two sentences with そして。Okay. Then let's make sentences using そして。うん。じゃあ、えー、じゃあ、東京、東京、東京、にぎやか。And 面白い。にぎやか。面白い。東京はにぎやかです。そして面白いです。ですね。Then let's describe person. フェルナンドさん。ゲグアップフェルナンドさん。Which adjectives can we use? フェルナンドさん。有名。famous。ね。famous。And かっこいい。handsome。かっこいい。フェルナンドさんは有名です。そしてかっこいいです。Okay. Then, うんじゃあ、let's describe Japanese 日本語。日本語,日本語は面白いです。か面白いです。うん。じゃあ、面白いです。Let's use this, this word. 面白いです。難しいですか難しいです。日本語は面白いです。そして難しいです。It's not correct. 日本語は面白いです。面白い。It's positive meaning. 難しい。It's negative meaning. So we can't use そして Okay. Instead, 日本語は面白いです。でも難しいです。Or 日本語は面白いですが難しいです。でもとがは but, but です。Okay. And the demo sounds more casual than ga. The meaning is the same. And when we use、uh, demo,、uh, there are two sentences. Sentence, sentence ichi, finish. Demo, sentence ni, ne, two sentences. But when we use ga, sentence ichi, finish. Ga, sentence ni. Sentence ichi, not finish. Ga, sentence ni. Uh, one, only one sentence is. Okay. はい。Then, えー、じゃあ、新幹線。新幹線。うん、which adjective should be used? 早い。早い。新幹線。えー、それから、高い。うん、新幹線のチケットは高いです。早いです。ポジティブです。高いです。ネガティブです。So we use でもはが。早い、高い。Okay? First sentence is 新幹線は早いです。でも高いです。Or 新幹線は早いですが高いです。ね。はい、Then what if we switch the order of the adjective? 新幹線は早いですが、高いです。新幹線は、高いですが、早いです。Do they mean the same thing? The answer is no. Okay, look at this picture. When the second adjective means negative thing, the total expression is, total impression is negative. And when the second adjective means positive thing, then the total impression is positive. Okay, 
So when you say Nihongo wa muzukashi desu ga omoshiroi desu. Nihongo wa muzukashi desu ga omoshiroi desu. Muzukashi is difficult. Omoshiroi interesting. Second adjective omoshiroi is positive. So I think are you have positive impression about Japanese study. But if you say Nihongo wa omoshiroi desu ga muzukashi desu. Second sentence is negative. Mm. So I suppose are you don't mm, think Japanese uh, Japanese study is not so good. Mm. So order is very important. It determines the meaning. Okay. Hi. Ja, eh, can you make sentence using two adjectives from here and describe something? You can describe something on this picture or you can describe anything you want, want to try. For example, sushi wa oishi desu. Soshite kirei desu. Sushi wa oishi desu ga takai desu. Like this. Soshite or demo ga. Ne? Basic structure is topic wa Adjective this. Okay, I'll show you another example. Ramen. Mm, ramen. Not so expensive. Ramen. Yasui. Yasui des. Oishi des. Yasui. Positive. Oishi. Oishi. Positive. So I can say ramen wa yasui des. So shite oishi des. Ne? Ja, Nihon. Nihon wa? Nihon wa? Kirei desu ka? Kirei desu. So shite? Omoshiroi desu. Like this. Okay. That's all for today. Thank you for joining my class. Uh, if you want to study Japanese more, visit this website. You can find a good teacher for you. And uh, yeah, maybe in this month, you can get promotion. So don't miss the chance. Okay? Hi, Jackyo wa kore de oarimasu. Tomo arigato ozaimashita. Mata laishu. Sayonara.